All right. How long did it take you to get here? Like 10 minutes or something? So I filed your home. So I've been here before. Oh, you've come by? You scoped it out? Well, I always, I do a little little recon before I do any kind of (laughs) podcast appearance. Make sure there's no traps or anything. Sure, sure. No. um, So, yes, I came, Natasha had a party. She hosted a party some years ago, and I attended the party. I kind of thought I was coming here. That doesn't matter. The point is I filed the location of your old house incorrectly. I thought you were maybe a block off Hillhurst. Right there. Yeah, okay. So I was, you're many blocks off of oh, Hillhurst. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I, my whole plan, guys, was to ride my electric bicycle over here. What do you got? Um, the vintage electric. Vintage electric. Do you know about this? Mo- this well, it's a manufacturer. The model's actually the Shelby. Vintage electric. We have like eight electric bikes in Goleta. Hey, grab that mic. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. Are you going to participate? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't. I don't always let her be amplified you- on the podcast. It's kind of a weird power dynamic thing we have. Sure. Hold on. Let's see here. Vintage. <laughs> Electric. Now, I'm gonna, can, Moshe, can I tell you what I like about them? Yeah, please. Um, so, I think. Can, that, can we start recording? Ooh, cute. Were can, we not already recording? Is it that the, was some of the best stuff I was going to bring today. <laughs> well, I did like the part where you said you registered her address after attending one party at her house. <laughs> right. Wait, this looks See, cool. Thanks yeah, for th- repeating it because I guess we weren't recording yet. Is, <laughs> is that, that true? true? We were recording, weren't we? Oh, we've been recording. That's Doc <laughs> okay. Shepard, okay. ladies and gentlemen. This is the Endless Honeymoon Podcast. Um, so why do we get one of these, a vintage electric? Oh, okay, so I, I don't know why it's this way, but people pretend they're going to pedal when they ride an electric I right. do. bicycle. Okay. <laughs> it's a struggle we have. It's a struggle we have because she wants exercise and it is so tempting to never, ever pedal the bike. Just have a bicycle and pedal that motherfucker or get yourself an electric bicycle and be driven. So this one doesn't have, it doesn't, it's not bullshitting anyone. There's a, oh, you there's can't a th- pedal. Well, you could, but there's a throttle on the, a thumb throttle on the handlebars. Most of them you have to pedal to activate the electricity. Is that the kind you guys currently have? No, we have, have a Galita? throttle the as well. The throttles have been amazing. We have a That's pragmatic great. get in touch with who you really are bike collection. <laughs> don't lie. Don't lie to yourself. Yeah. I, I don't know why it's so sinful to want to be driven around by the electric motor. I, there's. This is, you know what I'm saying? I don't do it in LA. I just do it in the countryside. Right. Bike in general or the electric bike? Electric bike. bike. Okay. And yeah. bike in general. I'm not trying to bike through Los Angeles. Dax, be careful. I know. In fact, on the way over here, I li- I honestly thought I might get into a physical situation with a couple of bicyclists. You almost the- got into a fight today? On the ride over here, the six-minute <laughs> ride, there was somebody who, you know, they're riding in the middle of the road as they like to do. It's their highway. Mm-hmm. We're just passing through. And what's that instinct? Because Moshe has it too. That right, makes I'm, a you fight. Want- I'm a fight in the makes streets, Makes you want to well. get into a fight about it. Well... B- Let's back up. Let me just paint the scenario for you. So I'm driving down Franklin. This person's in the dead middle of the road. They're on a bicycle, so they're going 14 miles an hour. So <laughs> pedaling like some poor person, right? Not even a throttle to be seen. Blind themselves. Yes. yes. Sure. <laughs> and then so I I pass on the left. I'm in a hurry. I've misregistered your house in my mind, and right. I'm trying to make up time. So then I pass them. Then I come up to the light. This is always a humiliating part of the experience with the bicyclists because, of course, they catch you. So now I'm at the light at Hillhurst, and this person passes me, and then they shamefully look in my window at me. And then so they have the moral high ground at that point. But then they just blow the red light. And I think, well, you've just squandered your moral high ground. Now you're breaking the law. I, <laughs> presumably the guy looked at me <laughs> saying, like, you, shan't, you shouldn't pass on a double yellow. I think that's what the shame uh-huh, look sure, was. Sure. But then he lost the moral high ground by blowing through. And then I had to pass him again. And then I, it just occurred to me, these guys get frisky. You know, what happens at the next stop sign if there's a, you know, hits my car? Sure. Wait, I, have you interacted with him at this point? Or you're just, this is all. Just, no, no. He's looked into my window to shame me. Then he yeah. ran the thing. Then I passed him again. So now as he's approaching uh-huh. again for the stop sign, I got to start thinking of the different scenarios sure. that might be ahead. I don't want to get caught off guard. There's nothing ahead. If there was a woman driving, there's... N- Sounds like you might be wrong, actually. There might be something okay. ahead. Sadly, in this situation, there was nothing. Natasha, you're correct. Mm. But I have, I've seen and or been a part of a bicyclist going completely rogue, hitting cars, kicking cars. They're an aggressive bunch out there. They are. We don't agree. Natasha? I just think it's very seductive to get into fights with strangers out on the out there For in the men. open. Men especially. Women just don't do that because they don't want to get ki- like, hurt. Sure. As often, yes. 
But yeah. Moshe, you've stopped doing it since we've had kids. But like, I remember we were in Palm Springs once and someone met, said something about our dog Pablo and Moshe was just like, you have something to say to my dog, say it to my face. <laughs> vibes and I'm just like what which, which structurally doesn't even make sense which I love well I wasn't talking to you sir I was talking to your dog I'll oh. tell it to his face you're an no, ugly that, little rascal I remember that and I rem this is the feeling that you get when you're a person that's prone to conflict in the world is I, I said something to this woman who was talking to, to the dog about how I had yanked the, the, the leash or something all of a sudden, I mean, without within one second, an, a man who I didn't even know was involved was one inch from my face, threatening to hit me, and I was like, "Oh, oh. wait, wait, oh!" After you said that, yeah, though. oh yeah, yeah, I was like, "Yeah, don't talk to the dog, bitch. Talk to me or something like that." Uh -huh, uh -huh. And and I was like, th th "This is not how I want to go. I don't want to go with some unrelated man who's been drinking like Miller High Life Tall Boys, <laughs> who just is like defending his woman because I was offended that she talked to my dog. Like, I don't want to <laughs> die in this case." Yeah, these things quickly escalate, and it's a domino effect. It starts as a, an insult to the dog. Now it moves to the wife. Now the man's involved. And now I have to decide. Now, now I'm willing it's to- It's not even death. It's like a bad night. Or, it's, or death. It could go, end up in, a, in jail. It could end up, you know, even just ruining a nice dinner or there's, something. There's so many loose ends here. One <laughs> is, yes, um, Natasha, globally, you're right. No one should be resolving anything physically. Thank okay? you. Okay? That's in stone. Then there is, let's say you're on the street and you. Well, this just happened. This this happened. Uh, I was in a I was in a first class lounge. Uh, there was a man from Britain. He was uh, dressing down. Uh, this this was in a Dubai uh, layover. Screaming at this gentleman that was working in the first class lounge, um, really lighting him up. Like, why do these bikes have pedals in the first place? We don't do that in Dubai first we've class. We've totally changed. You know, we've switched. This doesn't have anything to do with bicycles. <laughs> this is a layover on an airplane. No, I'm, I'm just not trying to make this relatable to people. Oh, yeah, I, yeah. Well, I will. Okay, so this this gentleman is is who's very verbally adept, right? He This person's, I'm guessing, a litigator. Very well-spoken, huge vocabulary. Just laying into this hourly employee inside the Dubai uh, first class lounge. This is going on to a point where people are starting to look. It's getting uncomfortable. I'm with Kristen. I always appoint myself the sheriff in this situation. I'm the sheriff too. Yeah, it's it's a lonely road because no one's no one's thankful for it. Like your wife wants not, the no, sheriff. No. The no. wife isn't thankful. Everyone's trying to talk you out of Every, your position. Everybody <laughs> wants to defund the police when you turn into the sheriff. That's so true. <laughs> now, in this case, I got lucky because Kristen was supportive of it. But you know. I said to the guy, I'm not going to reenact it because I'll sound really um, racist against British people. <laughs> yes, and just too machismo, too much sure. machismo. But oh, the you point mean you might, of it you is, might add a little bit. You might have sound, you might make it sound, sound tougher in this case than you were in reality. Oh no, I would tell it like it is, but yeah. it's never that great when okay. you're retelling it. I would sound douchey. Suffice to say, I say to the guy, basically, shut the fuck up. Don't talk to that guy that way. And when I and or there's going to be a problem. And I make it very clear, I'm going to knock you out inside of this first class airport. Mm -hmm. Damn. Because wait, you like that? Well, hold on a second. I, I got to make my point before we you okay. levy a verdict. A verbal dispute with this guy is going to bear no fruit. He's mm -hmm. like a litigator guy. We're going to argue back and forth why he feels entitled to shit on this person. He's bought a ticket. Maybe he's a platinum or sapphire member. He flies 10 million <laughs> sure. miles a year. The point is he'll walk away feeling like he had bested me and was not humiliated in any way. I introduced this other element, which is <laughs> I like we this. also live on I planet like Earth, yeah. and I will beat the fuck out of you if you talk to this person this way again. So- Although I agree with you, Natasha, in general, globally speaking, yes, that's not what we do. But when you're dealing with a fucking bully whose art form is verbal mm. discourse, mm -hmm. I do think it's cool to introduce, no, no, I'll beat you in front of other people. You'll be super humiliated. And now you need to shut up. That's how we win that. What mm. if I said that to somebody? I'll knock you the fuck out right here in this <laughs> Dubai first class airport. You think I won't, motherfucker? Well, that's the question, Dax. You smug British prick. I'll fucking take your spine and feed it to you. Dax, like that. Were, yeah. you, were you willing? Were you willing to do yeah, that? Would you? Oh, too willing. Yeah. Well, here's the qu problem I have. Not with what you did. I like what you did. And in fact, it's I agree. Cool. One time I, 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 one time Sticking I got, up for the underdog. The last time I got into a fight, uh, a physical fight was, I don't know, it was 15 years ago. And I was like, I was super ashamed and uh, of the fight. And I like, I was calling my, uh, my best friend and I was just really ashamed of myself. Yeah. And uh, he said, basically what you're saying, he said, look, 
It's embarrassing what you did. It's not mature. No, but we're all at the end of the day, we're all kind of apes. And this is the natural reaction to apes living in close proximity with each other. Once in a while, you're going to have like an alpha ape flare up and it's just going to happen. It's natural. It's yes. human. Also, let me add. So people are born with certain assets, there are certain privileges. So someone's born with an IQ of 150. They go into law. They're great at arguing and belittling people. Okay. That's one attribute you could be born with. Sure. I don't know why we're prioritizing one or the other. So he was born with that one. I was born with, I can knock this guy out. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. We're just putting our physical attributes or our innate attributes we have a privilege to have on the table. Do you follow me? Like, yes. I don't know Wait. why there's a hierarchy. Like, of you like, actually, you that's actually, a good point. You actually negated my counterpoint that I was going to make, which is the problem that I have when I go into that mode. Because I've gone into that mode before, into the... I always say I've, I know I've lost an argument when I mention I grew up in Oakland in oh, public. Sure, Anytime sure, Oakland sure, comes yeah, up, yeah. I'm like, I need to get out of here. Can really relate. I'll, yeah. say, I'll talk about Detroit in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but I also will never do that to someone that I have assessed to be a physical threat to me. I'm, oh. If that guy wasn't a, a slight... <laughs> A British lawyer. I you're going the other way. If you saw Mr. T, if you saw Mr. T in the in the Mr. Dubai T. in the Dubai first class, would you have said I'll knock you out, or would you have tried to? But but you kind of negated it by saying because you knew you had that that physical attribute that he didn't have, you Edge. could introduce that and shut him down. Judgment free. I do just want to delineate this. So there is a difference between you and, you, you and I. I actually would. I don't do it to someone who. Well, no. I I'm now going to contradict myself because that guy had a disadvantage, I think. Physically. Um, the bottom line is, no. Re ready to go at any time with anybody. You for childhood reasons. Sure. Younger brother reasons. The shame I'll feel uh, from having backed down will haunt me for months. A broken nose might be over in a week. <laughs> You think you think you go into the Dubai first class airport. Dax. You hear somebody uh, dressing down a, an hourly worker. You come around the corner, ready to say, "I'll knock you out," and the guy turns around and it's uh, Chuck Liddell or it's uh, it's Mike Tyson. Well, you're you getting you so specific. So now, well, hold on, because you're introducing like it's world champions. You're, okay, world okay, champions. Okay. So that let's can we? Those are such outliers. Right. Let's not use those. Okay. Let's sure. use guys bigger than me. So this a, this a huge just a huge muscle bound man. You'll go for it. It happened to me at the Albertsons at Hillhurst in Los Feliz <laughs> like 16 years ago. I'm in line and there's a guy like three ahead of me and he is a, a for real bodybuilder. Like he, he, he you know, I, I don't know if he was competing at the time, but that's where he was heading. Sure. And he was my height. He was, he was a very big guy. He's looking at me a little bit back and forth, back and forth. And out of nowhere, he just goes, <clears throat> what movie? <laughs> And I go, excuse me? My, I got to set up also. I was already in a bad mood that day. Okay, I was already having a bad day. So, what movie? And I go, excuse me? He goes, what movie was it? I go, what movie was it? He goes, yeah, what movie did I see you in? And I go, how would I know what movies you've seen? I would have to know every movie you've seen so I could go through. What do you? He turns and looks away. He's with his girlfriend. Mm -hmm. He walks out. I'm like, whatever. I go up to the thing. I'm now I'm in a really bad mood. I hate. I hated that whole experience. I was already in a bad mood. So now I've got a few bags of groceries, and I'm walking out to my truck, which is very close to the door. And I hear from on the other side of the parking lot, "Fucking without a pad on it, fucking sucked anyways." <laughs> <laughs> and. <laughs> Are you serious? I swear uh, to God, this happened. I understand there were where many he's, witnesses. I bet but, like twelve people in LA could confirm. By the way, story. I understand where he's coming from right now. Okay. I know what. No, I know what was happening for him. I'm Can sure. You walk do. me through it. He is a big, like a small-brained, like caveman boy uh -huh. that was paying you a compliment in the only language he knew how. He was saying, uh, he was going like, you rock, but he didn't know how to do that. So he had to do it through machismo and, and uh, steroid um, dysmorphia. <laughs> yeah. And so he was just like, what movie? And to him, that meant, you a rule. And then, yeah. he, and then you humiliated him. And he was like, again, steroid brain, the only reaction I have is fuck you. Yes. And so that that's all true and then you know in retrospect i wish i could have shown him this kindness mind you this was 16 years ago so i'm i'm 47 now i was 31 you know whatever sure i immediately threw my groceries in the bed of my truck and just started m marching towards him Dax, and in my mind oh my god this is what i can tell you went through my mind this is why men need he's, to get married 
he's 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 gonna win mm -hmm. but i'm going to i'm going to land a right to his nose before he wins like sure. he is getting a broken nose out of this experience <laughs> i love this. that's that i love this and, and I, I don't really give it. a fuck what beating i take after that mm. right so I'm marching at him, and now I'm on the offensive. I don't have to fucking read you my resume, motherfucker, when I'm in the fucking groceries. And as I'm getting closer to him, like I'm saying like 20 feet, I do see a look on his face, and I know so much in a millisecond. He's actually that big because he was afraid to fight. Sure. Right? Like that becomes immediately clear. The look on his face, I think, oh, I'm actually going to win this if it goes here. I can just see there's there's zero experience in this, what's happening now. Right. He moves to the car, he's backing up, and at some point as he gets close to the door, he says, what the fuck, bro? I'm so much bigger than you. <laughs> and now I actually think, oh, wow, I'm going to win. You're really <laughs> yeah, going to win. Yeah, this yeah. is going to be a very lopsided encounter. He, he, and he gets in his car and locks the door, and that was the end of that. He, okay, hold on. Wait, I, yes, please. I want to know if it, if it helped in the first class lounge. So that one. Oh, yeah. I just want to say, though, that that what you just described, yeah. that's the difference between Oakland and Detroit. I've always said it. That's Detroit <laughs> energy. That's D-Town right yeah, there. That's, yeah, that's strong O-Town, good energy. Good yeah, energy. Yeah, really but, positive. But D-Town. Yeah, did you shut the guy down? No, I, I no, want to know about in his, he, he backed in. As I was getting close enough to him, he he got in the passenger seat of and his girlfriend's the doors. BMW and locked the door. No, so I'm, I know. So, so that one, you got out of the broken nose. But what happened in the first class lounge, you never told us. Did you have to like pound this guy oh no 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 the guy was terrified it worked yes he shut okay. he shut up i just wanted to make sure it i worked. have to say the decks you are this making this turned out so bad no the last thing i want to do is come in here no. and act like a chuck liddell no what you're doing <laughs> is you're making and it's something that natasha needs to hear dax is making an articulated he's worse than you compelling case <laughs> no not that he's worse than me Although there's that too. He's making an articulated and compelling case for the power of threatening physical violence amongst bullies. And he is in fact saying that I should reignite that instinct in me well, and find conflict more. Can I add one little criteria, which is I don't do, I don't, I don't introduce that. I'm proud to say I don't like back when I was I'm a drunk, way. back when I was an alcoholic. Sure. I bet you could have caught me at a bar on the wrong night. I would have been looking for trouble. I'm not looking for trouble. It's not where I start, but also if that's what happens, that's fine. But they that's, always say that. Because My I brother think it's, is like it that. takes two to tangle. Like I don't. Yes, with what you're saying is absolutely right for you. For anyone else who doesn't want to be engaged in that kind of behavior, but if someone is in, interested in also getting throwing down. Um, I, there's no victim in this scenario. Like both this, both people have agreed this is how they want to deal with something. It's my man right there. <laughs> like I'm I don't know, I don't know what like this. overall moral philosophy. It's violating of both. What no, if your daughter's there? When or your kid is mm. there in in the presence? Do you do you cheap change that? Shot, up? Natasha. Yeah, <laughs> very cheap very shot. Very rude, actually. Yeah, yeah. What if it's your it's grandmother's modeling. 85th birthday? <laughs> no, pack? but you're with what your children the, a lot, I'm assuming. Yeah. The Pope and the Dalai Lama are there hanging out with you. All right, you, you guys do switch it? it if you want. No, um, I wouldn't. Well, that really depends. Um, I w would I fight in front of my daughters? Absolutely. A uh, dude is comes up to Kristen and gets grabby with her, and then I move that dude's hand. I mean, that just happened last month in Nashville. Um if that happens, that ha I'm going to protect Kristen in front of my kids. Of I'm going to protect my kids in front of my kids. So he's from Detroit, dude. Have you missed it? <laughs> of course, he's going to protect not, his no, no, kids. No, no, I'm from a suburb. But wait, I'm, I'm curious, Dex. Yeah. Uh, you're in a very successful relationship. Uh, yeah. so, uh, how how do you? And I uh, I totally relate to what you're saying because I'm like that too. I never want the dis. I, I, my thing is disrespect. Okay. Uh, unrequested disrespect. I it sends me through the fucking roof because. And I think it's actually because I'm like because I'm walking through the world with such respect. I have good manners. I treat people uh, well, and I'm careful about it. Yeah. When I get my toes stepped on for no reason, it sends me fucking through the roof. Yeah. How do you? quell the instinct within a loving relationship like with a uh, to like, knock kristen around no not to knock her around but to be to, but to be conflict to, but to lean into conflict well, when it comes to your loving relationship is it easy for you to not go there listen we've had a long long road and i will claim a ton of growth and success i haven't had we were dating for a year and i got into a fight and 
we were driving. I hate telling this. You don't have to tell the story. In a nutshell, we're driving down Sunset. We're dressed up. We're on our way to something. Um, and and right in front of Chateau Marmont, there is no crosswalk, right? It, it's just, it's it's a turn. There's no crosswalk. There's no light. There's a dude crossing the road. Fine. He has so much time to cross the road. <laughs> he it, he then glances to see if I'm slowing down and I'm not slowing down because he's not in a crosswalk and he has a ton of time. So then he stops and does like this tough guy thing in the middle of the road. I start, as I pass him, he's got like this 40 ounce drink and he chucks it at the windshield of the car. I thought in that moment the windshield had exploded because there's so much ice and glass. I thought the windshield exploded. And I'm pulling the emergency brake up and I'm out of the car before the car stopped. I get in a fight with this guy on the sidewalk right in front of that newsstand in front of uh, on Sunset across from Chateau. You, you get exit the car? I exit the car. I run after him. He turns around. He goes for my legs. I kick him in the face. He goes back. I get him in a headlock. Oh, it's a my God. big brawl on Sunset. And Kristen's never seen you act like this. She's sitting in the car that was just moving that is now parked in the middle of Sunset. <laughs> <laughs> and you're in danger. She's in danger. Everybody's in danger now. <laughs> well, this is the irony is that. And then this is how Kristen broke through to me. She said, you know, you think people feel safer around you because you'll protect them. And in fact, I feel much more scared around you mm. than other people because I think things could escalate to a crazy level really quick. Well, I've, I've seen it. That really punctured my whole identity. I was like, well, that's the opposite of what I'm going for. So I don't wish for her to feel more scared when she's around me. Mm. I want her to feel more safe. So that was like the low point in my outbursts. Um, I haven't had one like that since. That was like probably 14 years ago. I've had situations where I had to intervene. And and thus far, she's been happy with all of those. I haven't like crossed the line into crazyville since that time on Sunset. Um, well, Kristen's a very powerful person. And the I most powerful I've yet to meet. I feel like she's told me something that I always repeat. And I like a long time ago, like maybe like 15 years ago or 12 years ago, she was talking about gay people getting married. And she was like, we were talking about like comedy and saying the F word. And she was just like, I just don't want to ever be a part of what's holding things back. You know, and like just her saying that, I was like, oh, I'll never use that word. I'll never use a derogatory word. Like I never, I only want to be on the side of the ally. And Prior like, to that conversation, she threw around racial <laughs> slurs that like you would not believe. But yeah. that used to I've, be part. I've been around it. Yeah. <laughs> that party. I've been on the it was a very uncomfortable party. <laughs> I was on the business end of a few of those. People forget that comedy used to be about like saying shocking things. Right, right, and we right. weren't really like thinking all the time of like who you were offending and you know, it was just kind of like, it's, there was like an, I don't know, just a- Well, in the defense of comedians of that era, I am one of them. The comedian's job is to be standing at the very uh, precipice? Precipice yeah, of precipice. the line, right? And yeah. you're, you're, you're just shoving against it. So the line, 12 years ago, however many years ago, was at the F word. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's the line true. is not there anymore. You know, no, you're not we've on the moved it. Thanks yeah, that's to, right. that's you know, right. thoughts like what Kristen said, you know. Well, and, there was something that I once heard attributed to Bill Maher, but it's difficult to believe he actually said this based on who he is. Uh-huh. <laughs> but which is that anything that is bad for me as a comedian is good for me as a member of society. I what thought does that, that mean? was interesting. Like any time the line moves and I go, Oh, I used to get so much comedic power oh, out of saying uh -huh. that word. It it represents uh. a shift in the culture that is good for the greater yeah. uh, greater good of humanity. A growing bad. pain of a comedian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. It's evidence of something good's happened. Well, I, I believe that. You and Kristen seem to have a very happy relationship, at least on Instagram. <laughs> and um, you guys seem like you really like each other. And I'm just wondering, do you have any advice for us? Like, Wait, hold on a second. Well, this is coming. I get the same exact impression from you guys by looking at your Instagram. In fact, that's why I'm on this show. I watch your Instagram and I find you both so charming and funny. And I also think you guys have such a similar dynamic or what rather we have a very similar dynamic to you guys. And so it feels very natural to me, this whole 
thing. So I love the clips. I love listening to the show. And then I reached out to you and I was like, I would just, you know, if you ever want to be, be a part of it, I'm at your disposal because I love the whole thing. So, so, I, so you I think, think our that relationship's a, happier than yours? I'm not, <laughs> I, I haven't evaluated like, we, we do that. We kind of have a chart of, of sort of uh, power couples, who's doing better, so who's doing worse. To depersonalize it for me, who would you, at you saw another power couple um, that you think you are either have a better or worse relationship? We think then. we have a slightly better relationship than Adam Levine and his <laughs> wife, but a okay. slightly worse one than um, Jada Kanye and Kim. Yeah, oh. Jada and Will. Jada and Will. Yeah. Did, you, you. did you see the Adam Levine thing? No. Well, he was cheating on his girlfriend okay. or his, his supermodel wife. With He's got three kids with her with this girl and they had an affair and then he DM'd her and was like, oh, I miss you. And then he DM'd her again and said, can I name my kid after you? <laughs> Because her name was Sumner. No. How? And Sumner so he, Redstone? <laughs> no, but it, yeah, Previous it was, Viacom president? He cheated on a Victoria's Secret model with Sumner you know, Redstone. Listen, the hundred, the, he would not be in trouble. If it came out that he was fucking an 85-year-old man and was in love with him, we'd be like, that's Love right, is love. <laughs> Fuck yes. yes. Be true to yourself. <laughs> we, I'd be happy for Sumner. I'd be happy. I have noticed what Please you're talking Google about. Please Google Sumner Redstone if you don't know who we're talking I about. I have noticed that what you're talking about. If there are certain yeah. um, gay intergenerational couples that I've seen in the news where everybody's just like beautiful, adorable, lovely, that if that same image, the, d- the age differential was oh. a heterosexual couple, people would be like, creep, disgusting, predator. And I think that's a, a bizarre a bizarre double standard. I, I thought you were going to say, and we've talked about this a few times on Monica and I show, which is um, you're always happy for uh, a man who cheats on his wife with another man absolutely i mean you're you're, you're, you're like for real Found your truth yeah, yeah you could be happier for he and the guy and you just kind of like you like the woman's just collateral damage yeah, like, yeah. don't stand in the way of progress she's crying you're like that's those are bigoted tears that's Look, your problem yeah that's you yeah. trying to stop this <laughs> Well, I know Dax has some wisdom to drop. So uh, people yeah. have called in and they want to ask some questions. So maybe we should take oh, a call. Absolutely. I didn't even get to ask you about your RV. You know, I'm a big RV guy too. Oh, what, are you, what, what's the hurry? Do you have like a hard no. limit on how long this show is? No, no. I just, okay. I'm always worried about people's time. Do you have? Oh, you I know? have the world. Okay. This is, yeah. So oh. RV, let's talk RVs for one second. Well, we have very different um, aesthetic desires in our RV. Yeah. You have a... You have a palace. I have a bus. You, yeah, I have the smallest one possible. No, that's not true. Mine is, min- I look for miniature. You have a C class? I have a class B. That's Even smaller. A class B. You know, it's, it's a little. It's kind of like 70s and it has like the thing where you sleep up top here. It's like a cab. It's like the size of a pickup truck. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. But it doesn't have a camper on the back. It's a one piece full build out. That's right. On a, a truck chassis. It's like to, it's it's uh for if you don't feel like you're a man yeah. and I have that issue, okay. then you buy this and you are. Everything's good. Well, for a couple months, I'd imagine. Yeah, yeah, it does it, it does passes fade. you in something. But, but what's funny about it is it's so loud cuz the guy who had it before Moshe made it like super loud so right. he would feel uh, like a man. Yeah, us men are the worst. <laughs> I can concede that with all this talk about physical violence. Is that a picture of it? Oh, yeah. That's great. Yeah, that's my... It's so small. Is that the actual one? Is it? Wait. No, it's just like a tiger. Oh, okay. It's called a tiger... That's the size, right? You got to be in the mic, huh? That's the size. Yeah, yeah. It's called a tiger pro van, and what I like about it is I like how compact it is because I like the idea of... At, out. at any time I can like be gone yeah. and it's, and I can be in, in a plot of land in the middle of nowhere and thrive. But you, you have like the overlanding thing appeals to you. Yeah. Even though okay. it is again, just an expression of like a diminished uh, masculinity yeah. that I want to find a mechanical, but you're a big car guy. So maybe you relate to that too. Oh yeah. So my, my thing is any hobby I have to make any hobby I have as appealing as possible to my family if they're going to join me. <laughs> mm-hmm. Right? Wait, Moshe, you should do that. I try that. I Surfing. DJ. You love surfing. You love, de- you love techno. Surfing. Those are oh, this was, I heard Camping. this. This was one of the episodes I heard. Someone, the guy couldn't time, man, he couldn't manage his time. And he had like 65 pursuits. And right. you guys were like, you're going to have to just, the woodworker. we're going to have to ask, yes, the woodworker artist, <laughs> who also him. did like nine other things with bros. <laughs> Anyways, and then yes, I learned your list, and you had a you had a kind of a lot of solitary endeavors as well. That's now, right. I, I'm not. I I cannot relate. When I have friends that go, you don't golf. I'm like, I, the notion that I could say to my wife, 
Hey, I'm leaving at eight on Sunday. I'll see y'all at three p.m. That's uh-huh. such a non-starter. No, that is why Nor they do, do it. Nor do I even want to be that guy. You, so you go. don't feel a need to have things that are just for you. I do, um, but they're not every Sunday. Mm-hmm. They're not even every other Sunday. It's I go kicking. to the track. I'm allowed to go ah. to the racetrack, and that's an all-day endeavor. And that's like Once every month? couple months. Okay, I'm at the track all day long. And also, you kicking a guy in the face on Sunset Boulevard—that's your thing. <laughs> Years ago, that's for you though. That that's, was over a decade. But that's ago. only yours. <laughs> no, that's not a family. Well, that's something I, you share with the family. I do <laughs> think on, my nine-year-old would enjoy it because I did get a little. I got a little angry at a guy in Austria this summer on vacation because he wouldn't let my daughter pee in one of the thing and i got a little she saw me just a hint of the aggroness mm. and she said she really liked it she probably because it was it. in defense of her wait can yeah. i just say something when i get mad at something remember we went to that sushi place for our anniversary it was really expensive tell me, okay and then wait, every time tell the whole story hold tell on the whole hold story. on just let me say every time i do something moshe calls me a karen no just tell oh. Dax what happened cheap shot, yeah. cheap shot tell Dax what happened and see how you would how you would feel okay, okay there were this is before no. we proceed though can i just say during that whole conversation i relate more to you in the previous one about his free time. Thank you. So I'm like, I'm trying to do shit together, always. That's really nice. I love doing stuff with her, but I also like to water the garden that is myself. I, and I think that's healthy. I'm glad you're doing that. Okay, uh, the It's also restaurant. immature. Why is it immature? It's immature to want to not- Because it took you a while to like start acting like a boyfriend. Then it took you a while to start acting uh, like a father. And then it took first... you a while. You're still like trying, you know. Natasha's my first m- monogamous relationship that I've ever been in. Okay. Yeah. It's another thing we might share in common a little Is bit. Is that true for you too? Um, mostly, yeah. I had a nine-year girlfriend that was an open relationship. Uh-huh. And prior to that, I had a long distance that was open. So I had like a five-year, then a nine-year, then some time in between. And then Kristen was my, it's been my first major go at it. Well, you might be more mature than me, but I do think there's a subconscious part of me that thinks I was... I know it. I'm just, you're lucky I'm here. Like you uh, deserve, you're, a, you deserve a huge reward. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're this both is, like, we're good. <laughs> yeah. Not so much. <laughs> this is very addicty. I can relate. Like anything, you, anytime I'm like, just I'm, I'm towing the average mean line of not being a scumbag. I'm yeah. like, I deserve a fucking ticket. Yeah. What is it? Something ticket parade. Yeah. That the ticker tape, ticker yes. tape parade for not fucking other people. <laughs> all right. All right. Tell the sushi. This isn't even okay. a good story. Okay. Then I'll just I'll we cut. go to a really fancy place for our anniversary. There's only like eight seats. It's there's like a, a performance. Seating, there's a seating at five thirty. Uh-huh. There's a seating at nine thirty. Okay. We go to the five thirty seating. The, they say afterwards, and we're spending a lot. Throughout of money. the whole five thirty, they keep saying you gotta try the nine thirty. Now the nine thirty. Who cares about that? It's t- I'm, I'm painting a picture of okay. a story. But then they're like at the end because they only give you one piece of everything. So at the end, I'm still like a little hungry, and they're like oh at the God. end you After can four order four hours of eating. No, it was just an hour. No, it wasn't, honey. No. Why would they? Okay. Have it was two and a, we're two and a half hours. The in. point is, it was like six forty nine. Sure. And the next seating's at nine thirty. That's true. And they wouldn't give us any more food. No. And so I said to them, This isn't quite how it Hey, happened. it's like there's still two and a half. Like, how long does it take you to turn over the tables? And he's like, Karen, Karen, no. Karen. Oh, no, man. no. That's not exactly what happened. <laughs> they kept saying through the whole 530, you gotta come to the 930. That's where we can we can go long, we can Who's feed everything. Eat who who eats at 930? I don't know, but I'll tell you who eats at 530 octogenarian <laughs> couples celebrating their anniversaries and us. Uh, uh-huh. That's it. So you think maybe the older group has less of an appetite? I don't know what uh, it is, but they kept saying 9.30 is where we can go buck. We can really yeah. showcase our display uh, uh, of skills and you can eat as much as you want because we can go I'm long. I'm just saying there was at two and, five, and a half hours left. At the left. end, they were like, we have to wrap up. Natasha says, oh, there's no way to get another piece of salmon. He says, I'm so sorry. No, we have to turn the restaurant over. She starts steaming. No, I start saying... She starts steaming. Funnily, and, it's in two and a half hours. Yeah. That didn't make any sense to then me. Then he said no again, and then she did it a third time. <laughs> yeah, she was like, uh-huh. "Are you wait? You're are you serious? Can I at least get another glass of wine?" At that point, I was like, "I did drop the K bomb," okay. and that's where the edge of comedy is now. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Currently, we can still call word. people Karen. The K word. Yeah, yeah. That's as another much couple as you can weeks. Do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, well, how do you feel in that scenario? Um, like, I feel like Natasha. <sighs> Two hours left. I, I, it didn't make I, any logical sense they needed that much time. Can we start with maybe, maybe we would all agree that there isn't like, uh, I'm, I'm going to resist good and bad, right and wrong. It's like, Natasha's this person. I'm this person as well, Natasha. If you make me a part of a terrible plan, I find it so... 
<laughs> discomforting <laughs> that I'm going to make you uncomfortable too. Wait, who's I the would, ter- terrible plan terrible person? Plan the chef or me? Two and a half I hours. want it, like if you give me the number of this uh, fucking restaurant, right? I'll call right now and go. What on earth is the game plan? So there's two cities. There's there's a five thirty to nine thirty. Nine thirty. Why aren't these equal presentations? <laughs> Clearly, the people at nine thirty aren't eating till one thirty. So why aren't these identical experiences? There's no reason. What you can't order enough to give the and same it's experience. A the once whole a thing year is, experience. But you're not. You guys are both missing what I was saying, which is I wasn't saying she's wrong that that Part she's of a that, bad that, plan. I wasn't saying Natasha's wrong that they should be able to give you more sushi at this point. Yeah. I was saying at the second no, the conversation's over. Who are you negotiating with? Are you negotiating with the universe to try to bring right to it? Because it's too late. They guys, said no. Guys, all things, all, all roads lead back to the serenity prayer. So this is a bullseye of the serenity prayer, right? God, grant me, what is it? God, the serenity. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, Moshe. The, the courage. No, sushi. To, no cur- you're accepting the oh, things I'm you cannot the change. Prayer. Why doesn't no, no, she no. have to say the prayer? No, no, no. Listen. Okay. Right. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. That was your point of view. Yes. The courage to change the things I can. <laughs> That's that Natasha. is Natasha. <laughs> and the wisdom to know the difference. So, so life is just the wisdom to know the difference. So you happen to be in an acceptance mode. And she was at, I might be able to change this broken mm-hmm. system right now by shaming them into how, like... When they can explain the rationale behind half the food at the 5.30 sitting and needing three hours to, what, fumigate the restaurant <laughs> after you guys are in there, uh, none of eight it makes seats. sense. Yeah, eight seats. But, uh, we didn't t- that's a, oh, such maybe a good they point. wanted to eat. Uh, who knows what? Maybe but it was for them. I don't know. Did, it, was a, it was an amazing restaurant. Were they running a second restaurant out of there between <laughs> 7 be. and 9.30? It was amazing. And you should try it if you're ever in. It's in Montecito. It's called Sushi Bar. It's really quite an experience. Go to the 9.30 <laughs> seat. Clearly. Yeah. Um, but the, the five there is a fool's it's, errand. It's very fancy. It's Michelin star, super uh-huh. expensive. It was our anniversary. The maitre d', it's very like VIP energy. Uh-huh. You sit down and the maitre d' brings you over after they give you like some sancha, matcha, like c- cocktail. Like, you know, everything is just top, top, top. The guy sits everybody down. He's like, service is about to begin. <laughs> and just so you know, uh, this couple was actually staying in the hotel that this restaurant is in last year when we had a mass shooting event here. No, he said an active shooter. An active shooter event here. I was like, <laughs> why would okay. you start this really fancy... And this is the same guy who kept basically telling you you're at the wrong showing no, that was a, you that, need to come at 9.30. That was a different guy. I just thought, what a funny opener. Like, yeah. This this was the site of an active shooting event right here many years ago. Will we be starting with any cocktails? <laughs> You're just trying to detract from the fact that Dax agrees with me. No, I get it. I get what you're saying. Well, I get what you're and, saying. And it was frustrating for me, Dax, because Moshe didn't even understand where I was coming from. He's well, just like, I'm embarrassing him. It, and well, I just it, can felt- we back up? So I would be curious, like, what, what what kind of socioeconomic background do you come from, Natasha? Um, I'd say lower middle class from Rockford, Illinois. Rockford, Midwest. Illinois. Okay. And then how about you, Moshe? I would say poor. Poor. No, educated. You, not, you were not poor. Your parents had master's degrees. We, that's, we grew up on welfare. I mean, isn't that a classic marker of being poor? <laughs> that's pretty... Um, you were on welfare the entire time? Uh, my whole childhood, yeah. yeah. You were? I was. Is yeah. there anything better than government cheese? I still long for it. It I, makes the best grilled cheeses I remember yellow boxes of macaroni and cheese. Do you remember that? Oh, yeah, the yeah. yellow and black font. I remember nuns, good. No. nuns bringing us like baked bean tins that were like barrels. So and my mom just kind of shoved him in a in a thing like we were never going to So we're all him. kind of from not super economically yeah, privileged so backgrounds. That's interesting cuz there's I would I I would have maybe guessed like for you it right. almost sounds like you would have traditionally grown up in like kind of a high class world where making mm. a scene would be very like as bad as the meal was even worse than that would be to make a scene and to be low class. So I would be with you probably Natasha in that like you got to be kidding me. You, so here's where my classes and my insecurities would be. A, though everything you're talking about that you enjoy, I would, I hate it. I feel, I'd feel like I don't belong there. I'm, they're condescending to me. You're going to start with this, and then when it all added up to nothing, I was starving at the end of it, and it was seven hundred dollars. I'd be like, oh, and then you think I'm fucking dumb on top of it. Like I would, I'd have so much kind baggage of. in that experience that I'd have to even rule out the restaurant. It would just all be about like what I brought into it. I mean, I, I feel less full. than easy. <laughs> 
I want to leave full on my anniversary when you're taking me to like a really fancy place. Yeah. And he you want already stuff said. for that lovemaking, that ten year lovemaking. <laughs> no, mm-hmm. but he said that we can have more. Like they yeah. only give you one piece, and then some of them you don't like as to much. To be honest, you brought up lovemaking, and that reveals a big <laughs> secret, Dax. I asked the chef to cut us off at a certain point because I knew how hardcore we'd be fucking later that <laughs> That's, night. Yeah. Well, then that make that explains nearly everything <laughs> yeah. in this situation. I probably should you're like shut up, Karen. We're, gonna, <laughs> we're not gonna. I can't do a wobbly H with you and Mike if you've had. Seven rounds of that salmon. <laughs> okay, that well, is too much salmon for I'm fucking. I'm just saying when I when I try to go off, I'm called a Karen. <laughs> right, right, right. Because I yeah. can't. I don't have the upper body strength that you guys have, so That's, I can't come up to a person and, and be like, "Hey, man, if you say one more thing, I'm gonna fucking beat the shit out of you." Right. Yes. And to your point, Natasha, that's fair. Every time I get into an altercation with a stranger in public, you're incredibly supportive of me, and you really support my decision. So, <laughs> I'm not a fan of that. No, 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 indeed. Yeah. All right, well, it's well, it's uh, it's very unattractive. It is unless you come from a really damaged household, then no. that can be attractive. I mean, look, there are girls lining up to be with like UFC fighters because of all their baggage. I you mean, guys are lucky that you have successful careers and act like this. Like a lot of people, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. It like, really does I, come I, down I want to be clear. I don't act like that <laughs> I anymore. Know, I, I really I do understand. want to say. But it, For really, example, my brother, my brother during the pandemic, he yeah. lives in Illinois. He's been on probation the entire pandemic because he's like, I just, I, I was in 7-Eleven. I said to a man, hey, put on a mask, brother. Uh-huh. And then he like came, I'm pumping my gas. And then he comes within 10 feet of me. And so I knock him out. And I'm just it's like, so good he that- knows the legal amount that someone can step to him. And- Do you love hanging with him? You must. <laughs> I he is a, He's a challenge. Yeah, okay. He was so mad about this guy not wearing a mask. Yeah. It is and funny. then like now he hasn't been able to go anywhere for two years because he's in like half jail you know yes. and he spent time in jail for I that do can, love, I, can I make please well, I just want to make a defense of your brother myself <laughs> in defense a lot, of Louis a, a lot of, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say this is um, Moshe's background but <clears throat> the people who are very hardest to love on planet earth like the hardest for me is the guy in the jacked up truck with the balls hanging off the bumper he's almost impossible to love and you pull up and he's vaping and he's got tribal tattoos all over his and he's got a tank top on that guy more than any human on the planet has been so victimized that he's dedicated his life to sending everyone a message don't hurt me okay mm. don't hurt me i will hurt mm. you back good one. you have to have like it's almost impossible to do but if talk about who needs the most compassion it's like no guy's doing that because he wasn't he didn't get the shit kicked out of him by his father or was tremendously bullied as a kid like that's not the product of support in unconditional love mm-hmm. and and i suffer from that a bit like you know that's my baggage so much so to your point that i actually think it just it's a big part of why society is falling apart right now is we spent the entire late 90s and early 2000s vi- from the pulpit of comedy for example and yeah. every other form of pop culture viciously going after that that archetype yeah. that eventually they were like fuck that we'll elect trump and we will <laughs> rule again you know? well yeah it's like by the way it's all like a cycle of i feel bad for everyone in the equation so the kid who gets his ass kicked at home this was me to some degree i go to school oh my god i have power over other kids this feels good i'm not the victim i have an older brother all this now that kid's a victim he's a nerd the nerds won the fucking silicon valley they're driving around teslas totally like they won and so yeah now the jocks in the fucking bullies were like well shit well we'll we'll you will get this knucklehead who doesn't give a fuck if you're smart. You know, it's all like just flip flopping, but all starting with everyone's been a victim in the whole thing. Yeah. And it's really hard to feel bad for everyone. But, you know, when you have kids, you guys have, you have one or two? One. We have one. You have one. You know, you get the little baby home and you're looking at the little baby and you think, oh my God, the little baby is, there's nothing wrong with the little baby. Like they're just perfect. And they'll only turn out bad when bad shit happens to them. Like they start really perfect and every one of us did yep. with some exceptions of some you know some some genetic things that can happen to you but in general we were all little subway sandwiches and the parents looked at us and we were kind of perfect and then a lot of stuff happened between then and the jacked up truck rolling yep. coal on the Prius. you turn into a jersey mics <laughs> you know you wait long enough <laughs> I mean, we were in tears about that last night. Honestly, what we were thinking, because our daughter told us this story on the way home last night about how she was at a puddle and she was showing her other preschool mates 
like how to carefully pick foxtails and two of the boys pushed her oh, into the puddle shit. and all the other kids laughed oh. and, and it just i had i got i was literally in tears Most thinking like about, whoa, 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 who pushed you in the puddle <laughs> okay, what, what's his address? i'll knock his fucking ass out <laughs> no but i i was in tears thinking about like just what you're talking about like she's this creature of p- uh, utmost innocence and then these little experiences that feel stupid like yeah. being pushed in a puddle of preschool they're just these strands of like shame and cynicism and humiliation that add up to becoming an adult who's calloused and scared and doesn't trust people and it's so sad yeah and you know hopefully like those situations are manageable and she'll end up with like a little wool coat on afterwards yeah. Not a suit of armor. Now, if she's yes, if she's getting like hit in the back of the head when she is stupid and right. all these things, then From her it's parents then, who she should be trusting. Then she's wearing chain mail when yeah. she enters the world. So That's smart. Yeah. Well, I also think it's good to try to develop some empathy with those people and not always go with the most base base instinct when you like like my brother hitting someone like he yep. stepped to him within his feet and yeah. you know it's like you just always end up paying for that and I also think especially with like old people when because I get in fights with old people sometimes I just feel like. <laughs> They all in what situ- like, can you give me one example? Like neighbors or, you oh, know, sure, like people sure. talking. Cranky people. Yes. And I yeah. think that like everyone just has hemorrhoids. Yeah. <laughs> and if you like realize that, you know, it's just yeah. people are in physical pain. S- spiritual hemorrhoids. Well, physical hemorrhoids. Yeah. I got, can I tell one? I'm going to tell. I just want to put one feather in my camp because I've told really ugly stories about myself. What I have figured out now that I, I couldn't have ever imagined. And I think it's as a result of like really liking myself having an identity that's cemented in being the dad of these two little girls. And I'm so proud of how I'm doing. It's like the best I've ever felt about anything in my life. That's awesome. And it's so clear you're a great dad. And you are too, Moshe. Thank you. We should dad it sometimes. We should. That'd be <laughs> Let's fun. Let's go dad around. But I can tell, you know, you can, you guys like give a lot of your energy. Like you're, even with your hobbies, you're like, if it's for my family, that's a good dad. Back to the bus. Yeah. Like the kids got to want to get in there. There's two bunk beds for them. The mom's got to want to be in there. She's right. got to be comfortable. You know, we can't just be my, like, let's, let's go. Anyways. Um, so I was in the sand dunes last year. I go to the sand dunes a lot. That's one of my hobbies is off-roading. Suffice to say that the sand dunes is um, 99.99% wearing let's go Brandon shirts. Sure. And yet this is my hobby, right? So it's in and, and for years that was fine. I think they even found it kind of charming that there was a liberal out there and we would kind of all have fun with each other. This grew um so exponentially in over the last year and a half, or the last time I was out there, and it was kind of still at height of, you know, it was a, a full year ago about right now. And so like whether you were vaccinated or not was a big deal. I still had to interview people nonstop. I had to always be negative or I'd have to shut down the show. And so I was out there and we go to the drags where everyone's gathered and this woman comes up to me and she's like, Hey, can I get a picture with you? And I go, Oh yeah, absolutely. I, and I'm about to step up to her and I go, Oh, are you vaxxed? And she goes, Oh, am I vaxxed? Am I fuck? I heard you were a fucking asshole. And now I <laughs> what see movie? you're a fucking what asshole. movie. <laughs> she lit me up oh like God. the biggest scene you've ever seen. There's people everywhere. I'm with five friends two of whom are from Detroit, ding, ding, ding. Sure. I look at her group, she's with five dudes, and I just kind of look at the dudes and I'm like, oh, I've been in their situation, they hate this. Uh-huh. These Our dudes are much bigger, they're bummed. I don't say <laughs> anything to her, I just kind of walk away from her as she's screaming obscenities at me, super rare move for me. Get over to my group of friends, Luckily, the guys start kind of telling her to shut the fuck up. Like, they don't want to have to rumble with us. She comes back up to me three minutes later. Will you take a picture with her? She's a nurse and she's vaxxed. <laughs> That's beautiful. And I, I go, yes, I'd love to. I take a picture with the nurse and we carry on. And then me and my childhood best friend, who I'm still best friends with, Aaron Weekly, we're in the bus that night and we're laying there and he goes, um... I was pretty blown away with your reaction to that gal tonight. And I said, yeah, me too. And he goes, and what was, what was kind of gangster about it was like, it was such a bigger burn Mm -hmm. that you really didn't give a fuck that she was judging you. And I was like, I know it's such the move. The move is I don't really care that you think I'm terrible or that I'm this or that. Like I'm kind of good enough with myself that that has no impact on me. That now feels like the ultimate Judah move. Okay, Judah hold on. move that I'm, I'm, go ahead. Would you have done it if it was a man? 
It would have been a lot, lot harder if it were a man. That's your new. But, that's but, your new assignment. But but what was comforting is even had it been a man. Um, well, look, let me back up to Aaron Weekly. So Aaron Weekly got sober almost three years ago, coming up Thanksgiving. Um, congrats, Aaron Weekly. Huge congrats. He and I were the biggest fucking drunks you'd ever met in your life. I quit eighteen years ago drinking. He then finally did it. So we've been talking so much about like moving through life sober. And I had to say to him at one point, you know, the rule I came up with with Kristen was I don't interact until you're touching me. Mm. If you're touching me, all bets are off. That's mm. like my weird That's childhood fair. stuff. Like yeah. That's yeah, I will not ever let someone control my autonomy. That but everything up to your touching my body. I'm, I, I grant myself the freedom to ignore without feeling less than or that I was defeated or that, you know what I'm saying? Spit mm -hmm. in your face. How about spit in your, like, well, like breath in your face. No, that, you're oh, breath really, in face. Breath oh, in face. breath Spit in, in your face is touching. But again, I'd have to comply with breath in the face. Like, if you come right into my face, I got to stay there and allow you to breathe and spit in my face. So my thing, I will just turn and not be a part of it. Now, if you touch me. We're in a different realm, and, and 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 I need that. I need to be able to grant myself, like, hey, someone touches you, whatever, all things go. But anything short of touching you, you're going to ignore. That's the new policy. Like, I can't be making judgment calls when all this stuff is. I have to have marching orders before they happen. So I like to think in that situation, had the guy been calling me a pussy and all these things because I got vaccinated, what a coward I'd be for getting vaccinated. <laughs> I want to say I'd roll with it until unless I felt him touch me, it might have changed. Okay, I believe that. I yeah. think that's true. Yeah. I mean, this seems like a good policy. But is this it, the most fight-heavy episode of The Endless? No, but this is good. Honeymoon? No, but but honestly, you're this also... This is probably an issue that more than one a, couple deals with, A lot actually. of men... I mean, the thing is, and I think that I was... This whole conversation I've been thinking about this inner teenager that rules my life. Like, yes. to this day, I'm 42 years old and still... Like when I get angry or scared by another man, especially it become it's the reason Oakland comes out. It's because there's this teen inside of me that's like yeah. still trying to like prove who felt very scared, who was very scared yeah. and wanted to be tough, and wanted to be acknowledged as such. And like my stepfather, I'm I'm not Christian, so I'm not allowed to play. What would Jesus do? But my okay. stepfather is Larry, and so my whole adult life I've been trying to play WWLD. What would Larry do? Because he's like he a was scientist a scientist. And... He's just this egoless person oh. that if anyone stepped on his toes, he would go, "Oh, d that seems like a bad thing." to be in, in an interaction with and walk the other way yeah. like i was at the spa the other day and my with my cousin and the woman at the at voda spa was like don't put your card in there but like mumbling it don't put your card in there don't put your card in there and he put his card in she goes you need to listen to me i said don't put your card in there and i like you know i i i, I was like oh my god she needs deserves to die yeah. and he says oh yeah i never listen you know my wife hates it too and then we go outside and he's like wow what a bitch right yeah and i just it was just like I was watching you in awe because yeah. I was like a, a hundred times I have that interaction. Not one time do I have the response you did, and it was the right response. Yes, and you recognize the ultimate bravery in heroism is actually uh, extending that to, to somebody. That's the hardest thing to do. The easiest thing to do is to freak out and blow your lid. So yeah, I am also learning to like yeah to your point like really admire in people that they can just. Let it go. It'll be over. It'll be over in minutes. Uh, in a marriage with kids, you know, I can do it with my kids. Like, oh, they're going, just, we just got back today from Huntington Beach. The car ride down. First, it was, I'm car sick. They're not. I know this. Both are car sick. <laughs> now there's this crisis. Now this thing's happening, you know. And in my head, I'm just like, if you ignore this, in seven minutes, it'll be another thing. And then in eight months, it'll be another thing. But eventually, we'll be out of this car, and then we'll be on to our little trip to Huntington Beach, and it'll be good. But the strength required for me to not uh, add my opinion to every one of these scenarios is the hardest thing I've ever done. Much harder than any time I've fought another guy. Mm -hmm. So what do you say? You're just like, uh-huh. I hear that you're, that you have, I'm sorry that you have an upset stomach. Hopefully, it'll pass, honey. Yeah, well, I'm... Um, you should look out the window at the horizon. That always helps with car sickness. That's good. Natasha's yeah. like, we should find a, a emergency clinic <laughs> stat because I knew it. I knew you. Moshe, get car there's sick. a helo pad. It says there's a helo pad on the right by this arena. I think we could get her airlifted out of there. All right, should we do a call? I just yeah, I could talk yeah. to you all afternoon, yeah. but As this I is great. Talk yeah. to you. I don't um, ever want this to some... end. Can this be a six-hour? Should we just 
switch over to live, we could do and live the rest of our lives on this podcast. If you want to do a Rogan esque four and a half hour marathon, we can. I, mean, I was about to bring up David Foster Wallace, which is when I knew oh. it was time for us to move on. <laughs> To move on. Why were you going to bring that well, up? Well, what you were talking about was the theme of that famous David Foster Wallace essay. Oh, what this is, is the water? water. This is oh, water. Oh, this is water. And it's yeah, just yeah. like that idea that the person that cuts you off in traffic who you like want to slice their throat, like you don't know what happened. Their son could have been, you know, they could have gotten a call on their way to the- Well, that's uh, called on, empathy. On, on their way through and so your son's been in a car accident. Yeah. All, all you know- is is what you're experiencing and your little it reminded me of this other thing that i probably shouldn't say because it sounds so pompous but this idea of the you know the smiling buddha yeah. they call that smile on the smiling buddha the smile of infinite compassion uh -huh. and the, this there's this idea i i heard that like our compassion ring extends usually uh, just for us and our family and our friends and the 20 or 30 or 100 or so people that we know and love and the whole mission of life is to try to just push that that ring yeah. out further to allow more people to experience the same compassion and love that we extend to ourselves and to the people that we love but it's so hard and you partner with somebody like that's my wife she she cares about the whole world i don't i'm like a republican <laughs> right. in this way i care about like the dudes i'm helping get sober my immediate family and yeah. it's okay that we have two people thinking about keeping our eyes on two different prizes totally it's like why we get together almost i think but 12 steps are interesting in that way because they give you this kind of external uh, version of automatic compassion it's like a person comes to your meeting or whatever yeah. and they're a stranger to you mm -hmm. but you have this uh this sort of uh, this artificial system of compassion like you are one of us immediately upon arrival well, and that's good for the human psyche i think well can i even this observation happened last week on a meeting i, I hadn't had it and i've been going to meetings for 19 years I'm looking at a Zoom, the one I go to every Tuesday. I know on the, Zoom. On Zoom, I've known these dudes for some of them 20 years. I'm looking at this. this there's about 19, 20 guys on the screen, and I said in my share, if anyone looked at this Zoom, they'd be like, "What do these people have in common?" Sure. There's a bunch of old people. There's some black folks, some white folks. There's Jewish folks. There's all. I mean, what the fuck does this group have in common? And it occurred to me, this is the only group I've ever joined that I selected by having the same failing as me, the same mm -hmm. weakness as me, the same shortcoming. And yet the level of vulnerability I can have among that group, the level of connection I have far exceeds any other group I've gravitated to because of my competency. Mm -hmm. Oh, we both ride motorcycles. We are both into comedy. We are both podcasters, whatever criteria, ironically aligning yourself with people who have the same failing and weakness <laughs> as you do might be the answer right. i don't know it just hit me last week like this cuts through everything like oh bro you struggle with this too you've been defeated by this a million times too okay what happened to you like yeah the level right. of compassion when you start with a, an owning some failing is so powerful our weakness is our strength mm. All right. David Foster Wallace. David Foster Wallace once said, <laughs> the smiling Buddha himself, David Foster Wallace. Okay, let's try to help some people. Yeah, yeah let's bring some of this wisdom to the masses. Now we're going to call Sarah and John in Petaluma, California. Beautiful place, by the way. A beautiful place indeed. Have you been to Petaluma? Is that is there an ex-like naval base right there? Well, it's just very northern Cal some of, some of northern California just looks like Ireland. It's just it's, like beautiful rolling hills. Redwoody. It's beautiful so in Redwoody. Gorgeous. I used to go to raves in Petaluma at the Phoenix Theater. Have you guys ever raved there? We haven't raved there. You guys uh, should try raving. You look like you're just at the right age demographic to start <laughs> raving. Exactly. Let's um, start our rave career now. Wait, I'm sorry. What are their names again? Sarah and John. It's Natasha Moshe and our friend Dax Shepard is here to help you. Hi, Sarah and John. Uh -oh. Hi. Hey. Hi. I'm, I'm making some gender-based stereotypes that you're on the left there, John. <laughs> you know, Sarah, I'm imagine you're the one with the longer hair. In, in the Petaluma, group. they're still going by the, the binary that we've all rejected you. down here in LA. So much easier. Yeah. yeah. All right. What, how can we help? Yeah. So um, we have an eight-month-old baby, um, and we are talking about whether to have a second kid in the future um, or just to keep it at the one. Um, so I wanted to get your guys' thoughts on, uh, you know, pros and cons of only child versus multiple children. Figured you'd, you know, have some uh, some you, stuff to say on that. We had been getting along so well, Sarah, and you, <laughs> you, you basically just dropped an atom bomb between the three of us. That's right. As owners of one kid versus owners of two kids. 
It's well, very personal, I think. And, and I also think that if you had, like, I, I never even wanted one kid. So for me, like, to have one child with Moshe, like, that is such a huge thing for me. And I'm not into, like, babies. And so for me, it was just like. <laughs> Mothering and nurturing. <laughs> even my own child, in a way. I'm not into her. But I'm just saying it was it was never a question. Whereas, like, I have so many friends who just have this, like, sibling emergency. Like, oh, my God, I have one kid. I need to have another. That's how my family was. And I need to have the, the sibling for them to be able to associate and I know that I'm gonna have to like work extra hard at like we have a we have a friend who has three kids and we always try to do vacations with them and you know I you know those are her pretend cousins and you know I'm just trying to be very active about that kind of thing because she's not gonna grow up with I don't want to be a referee it's not for me but uh Dax do you have anything to say on it <laughs> that was a good rhyme <laughs> I'm not a referee it's not for me um we did not want a second child as I'm sure you guys are feeling right now like there's uh, you must feel so content and so full. You're not wanting for anything. Mm. So it's a bizarre conversation to start because it's perfect. And it's so much easier. You can take that little Subway sandwich anywhere, mm -hmm. as I'm sure you guys are doing. So manageable with two of you. You could go to Japan. You could like go get your you know eyebrows done and bring the baby and give it an iPad. But like two kids, you can't really bring two kids to a salon. Or like, I'm just saying if you have, <laughs> or your errands. Yeah. With just like the lifestyle of, of one, I, it kind of seems like one kid or having two kids is like really hard for the first 10 years. But then like after that, maybe there's benefit. <laughs> not, not even that, not even that far. And then, so I'm on the other side of when it was shitty and when it got easy. So I think for Kristen and I, we had two thoughts. One is we travel a lot. It's not fair to bring this little human everywhere we go and deal with only adults. Like we owe it to her to give her a playmate that travels with Aww. us Damn everywhere. It. I fucked like, up. We love her <laughs> enough to do something we don't really want to do, which is have a second. Cause we were so absolutely happy with just the one. Secondly, our kids already so privileged beyond belief. It rattles both of us being from very, you know, modest backgrounds. So minimally to make this spoiled bitch, my firstborn, live in the same room with another person and have to share everything like i needed a force of compromise and sharing and discomfort because i wasn't gonna give it to her in the other ways so i we just thought it would be really helpful to make her a better person to have to deal with someone else so you had another kid for the kid thousand percent we did not want you Delta, should play. And we but, still don't want you, Delta. Yeah, play this no. podcast for Delta for sure. <laughs> I, she already knows. I like this idea that you're co kind of cosplaying a lack of resources for your kids, so they have to fight over over the over the, that lack of resources. I think for me, <laughs> I would I would have done too if I was in charge, and I tried to make myself in charge our entire relationship, and I have been failing. I would have done too if I if it was up to me. Natasha definitely would have done. You would have done fifty percent of one, right? And it's like. Natasha always says one is uh one is an accessory, two is a lifestyle, and I think that that is so true. Yeah. Uh, and I just feel like I have such a close. This is my real mathematics of this. I have such a close relationship to my brother. We're best friends, but also there are other brothers in the world that get into fistfights with people for not wearing masks and are on probation for two years. So it's not as though you're guaranteed to have this wonderful relationship with your sibling. Like it, it's a crapshoot, right? <laughs> It is a crapshoot, but I'll just say, if you decide to go down the path, I do heavily recommend doing it as quick as possible because Smart. our kids are under two years apart. And for mm. a minute, that was difficult because, you know, when you're five and the baby's three, that you, that's no fun. But I will say the corner we've turned is like, now they party. Not mm. only do they party together. Oh, sounds good. I'm they're sorry. united against us, which I love. <laughs> like if I'm giving it to one of the girls, the other one comes over, you're not being nice to Lincoln. You didn't listen to what she said. And I'm like, that's right. Mm. That's your role. You guys gang up and kill me. It's oh. you two against the world. Like that that stuff, I think that the less the age gap is, the easier it is to achieve. My brother and I are five years apart. My sister and I are six years apart. And that's a hurdle, you know? Who, who Wait, did I make a mistake? No, no, Zach? no, 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 no. You're, uh, there's no wrong way to do it. It's just different versions. The, now, the downside is we were in hell for many years that you weren't. I, yeah, yeah, what was that you, like? How do you get and through what that? What did you do to make it manageable? I can't even drink. 
<laughs> a lot of, I can't lot even, of dip. I can't even a lot remember. of dip. A lot of even, Copenhagen. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> a little <laughs> lipoplakia. <laughs> that Smoke. seemed to be the way our friends deal with it. And it's like, mm, that doesn't look great. But also, like, uh, are you a natural mother? Are you a natural father? Like, do you love kids? Like, I have friends who, like, will be out in public and they're like, how old is she to, like, strangers' children? And, like, I don't fucking care how old you're... I'm more interested how old you are. How old did you give birth? Like, you know, like, I'm not that interested in babies. And so, like, but if some some people just have that capacity. So if if you have that, then maybe it would be good. And also, Dax has a very different schedule than you might have, you know? Like, he says he purposely... Like, Dax, would you have had another kid if you guys were stay-at-home people and... You know, because you're saying because you travel, you did this. Well, it's ironic because we've pretty much stopped traveling. But, <laughs> but <laughs> like we had two kids and all of a sudden we were like, oh, we're never leaving town again to work again. So right. ironically, it didn't even the reason we had it didn't even come to fruition. But that doesn't matter. Right. I want to hear Sarah. I don't I wouldn't say like I'm like a baby person, I, but I I don't know. I think it's just like like I, I think what John was starting to say is it it's funny to hear someone with with two kids be like you guys are at such a like peaceful easy stage when like to us this is like a you know a tornado you say you but, have an eight month old right now yeah i can say this i having one kid and I, I know this is just prolonging the agony but having one kid i'm acutely aware of every developmental stage she goes through is this like heart like song it's the most beautiful thing in the world but it's also this heartbreak because every time she goes through a developmental phase i'm like wow we've moved on from this adorable Mm -hmm. perfect thing that she was before into this new perfect thing that she's becoming and i'll never experience that uh, that innocent thing again because we've moved to a new developmental stage which is why i know why some people have kids again is to recreate this experience of watching this subway sandwich turn into a gourmet meal Uh, right like six inch turn into a 12 inch (laughs) turn into a party sub (laughs) (laughs) yeah so it's like I know that like now she's like a little girl now fully. She's like pretty much not, she's becoming pretty much not a toddler at all. And it's this beautiful heartbreak. Everything is like, Oh, she's, she's, she's moved past that. She's this she's type like of person. She's like using big now. words, you know, totally. She told me I didn't reply today. She said, well, you didn't reply. What was I supposed to do? I was just like, where, how? So do you, do you have a boy or a girl? Cause it, uh, that informs a little bit of my advice. We have a boy. And oh, actually- don't, don't do it then. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah what if you have two boys oh, oh you'll, yeah. you'll, you'll, you'll die know. yeah that john will sad. be out of there yeah <laughs> the first Sarah will be... out of the way is a physical handful he's like a force yeah <laughs> could you manipulate is but it possible we also have older we each have older brothers so we know that experience you know the the fun experience of older brothers listen like, i think it's when, also it's also about resources you don't want to not have enough money and have two kids and like not have enough money to Sarah, able. how much money do you have? Yeah, how much money do you both make individually? <laughs> no, and what's in your joint checking Having account? some help, you know? Like, how does a woman go to work, clean the house, have two, have a baby in diapers, and then a toddler you got to drive to school? Like, that's just a lot. Like, mm-hmm. you know, you have to, like... For me, I need to ha- have some help, like, outsourcing. And, you know, our friends, we're trying to schedule with them. They have three kids. They have three kids in, like, soccer, theater, like, traveling. Like, everyone's in a million activities. That's, like, more kids. It's just, like, it's a lot. I don't yeah. know. I mean. There's something I like about our little unit. Like, speaking of RVs, my RV has three seats. I, I custom built a third seat into it for our daughter. And it's just me and Natasha and our kid. And we're on the road. And, and it has a, exactly the amount of sleeping space for three people. It's like this little unit. And it's my family. And I like it like that. So, But I think I have a solution for you. And I have some real advice. Uh, adopt a, 14, a tall, strong 14-year-old that can watch your child and do housework. That's what I would say. That, then you get the a best girl, of both yeah. worlds. A girl, sure, sure. A milkmaid from the hinterlands, you know? Can we? Can I hear your guys' pros and cons list that you've come up with already? I mean, well, we're not, you know, he's only eight months, so we're not, like, you know, trying to urgently make a decision. We, we, we have some time, but, um, yeah, I think it's, like, you know, my, my sister-in-law put it as, like, you're if you have an only child, you're going to feel, like, pressure on yourself to always provide entertainment for that child versus like with a sibling, you always, you know, they'll playmate and be playmates. Um, 
but you know, yeah, lifestyle wise, I mean, we, I'm from the East coast. He's from here in California. So like we do expect to be traveling a lot. It'd be a lot easier to have one kid for that. Um, for me, the pros are all for him, which is like, you know, he's going to have a brother or sister, which could be fun. Um, and to Dax's point of like having some, I don't know, my brother beat me up, you know, 300 times or whatever, which I think formed my opinion or my, uh, personality a lot, <laughs> maybe for the better, I guess. Um, and then the cons is like, I, uh, I just feel like I've sacrificed so much already mm. and to sacrifice more would just feel like oh my God, I have no life anymore. I'm not me. It's such a hard decision because like, yeah, like these like, they they call them in China like sick princesses, Uh like the only children and the little emperors. And it's just like, it's, you know, sometimes Moshe and I'll just be like, you know, I'm brushing her hair. Moshe's like, you know, massaging her legs. And we're like, and then she's just like, ah! And we're like, what's wrong? What's wrong? And she's just like, this, this, this pine cone is too naturey. You know, and we're like, can I get you another pine cone? You know, like. Moshe, she wants a crystal pine cone. Go on Zawarski.com. That is very funny. Well, I mean, I'm, that I can't be good for the kid, but I, I don't know. I'm trying to like be very cognizant of that and and make sure that we don't spoil her and I'm reading books about it and doing the best I can and maybe she will be a little spoiled but hopefully she can like stay very down to earth Mm -hmm. and you know we'll just try to keep teaching her and spending time with her and putting her in classes and socializing her and you know I, I think it's a very personal decision I think you have to really like visualize like what do you want from your life like already a boy seems like so much but then it's also like it might be nice to have a girl if you could get a girl but girls and boys don't really become best friends but I, they, mean, I, mean, I think what John said was key. It's John, right? John and Sarah? Yeah. Yeah. I think what John said, though, shouldn't be like glossed over or stepped over. If you're already feeling like you're, you've are you maxed out, mm. I, I, I would say that that's your answer. Yeah. Um, I am a really self-centered piece of shit, as most addicts are. And ironically, the less I am free to think about myself, the happier I am. So I actually get a huge benefit out of having to be so fucking uh accessible and and always available to them it cuts down in the amount of time i can think about what would make me uh, Mm. incrementally more comfortable which is all i think about all day long and so but that's what personality type i am so it's like i have learned the more of service i am to everyone around me i counterintuitively the happier I am but if you're not that Wayne you don't you're not a self-centered piece of shit and you're feeling like you're giving plenty of your attention away and you'd like to reserve the rest for you then I I would say that's not for you but John I'm look I just and no I hope you don't take offense to this but just in the short time we've been interacting I was getting a strong <laughs> self-centered piece of shit vibe from you yeah I think so, that's I definitely have some of it. Uh, <laughs> no, it's I, the aggressive voice he has. That's right. Yeah, that's that's right. <laughs> I think, honestly, this is a decision uh, that I like what you were saying, Dex. Do it quickly. But, you know, you're eight months in. The truth is when your kid develops a little more, you're going to find those pangs to have another child. And they're either going to be irresistible or not. And I think that nature is going to tell you whether or not you want to do this. I really think. And and I really think it's okay. And and a lot of what they said about only children in the 70s and 80s, it's not really true. Like the results are in. And like only children make more money. They, They have more education. They're oftentimes happier like it's not really I think they were trying to make people think that like I I remember growing up and thinking only children were freaks and that that they were like you know brats and I don't think that's exactly true Right. You feel like more people are having just one child Absolutely. now. Absolutely. Yeah, and, and they get more resources from their parents. They get more more energy from their parents if they need to have a, a tutor or whatever or get them in classes. And you know, I, I think that like the more conscious you are of like yeah, I mean, yes. China's one child policy. I think what you're saying is that you we should think that China's one child policy was the way to go. It's yeah, but, crazy but making that it official that boys it's boys only, which you're half you're already there. So you're good. Right. Yeah. I would have another kid if the world was like worked out differently and we didn't all have our own homes and our own like everyone had to do everything themselves like if we could live in a group or something I think it would be fun to have like a few more kids but it's absurd that like everyone has to like we all have our own little private houses and we all have like every day I have to make you dinner and every day I have to pack you lunches and snacks and like every day I have to wake up and make you breakfast it'd be so much better to like split those 
responsibilities up and like do it once a day once a week and then other people share it well it's my famous saying i always i wrote this saying it's called it's it takes a village to raise a child it's like one of my <laughs> classic that's really it, good thanks, that Thank sounds you. great we'll say it but, again i want to be like, it takes a village <laughs> yeah a whole village to okay. raise a child but it oh my used God, to be so like fun. that it did used to and, be like and, that and here's why you guys think it's funny and i think it's serious and uh sarah understands me is because the woman takes up so much of that absorbs so much of that silent labor mm-hmm. that you know it's like yes you're gonna have a new baby but like while your boy is going through his cutest phases sarah's gonna be breastfeeding and have the satanic (laughs) pump machine in her face and like having to like there was just a study there was just a study that they wrote about in the new york times that women working mothers today spend more time one-on-one interacting with their children than housewives did in the 70s and 80s Whoa. So it's like it didn't go down, it went up and added you added a job to I it. I know. <laughs> and the house still needs to be cleaned, you know? Like all day long these women in the fifties were cleaning. Well who's cleaning? What do you wait? I'm I wanna sorry, say what, is, what oh. do you want me and Dax to do? We are at the sand dunes and we are living <laughs> yeah. our lives attempting to get in touch with who we those, are. John, meet us at the dunes. Those records aren't gonna spin themselves <laughs> at the dunes. <laughs> I, I have one thing I do want to say though, because it's something you can't I don't know how you would learn it without having two kids. And the best part of having two kids as a parent is when you recognize how immediately different they are, it's a breakthrough. It, truly, it's a breakthrough. That's because cool. I think you have this illusion that you're shaping and molding this kid and mm. helping her oh, and be perfect. And once you meet the second one, you're like, oh, same parenting, same two people raising them, completely different outcome and opinion on everything. Wow. They're born exactly who they are. Mm-hmm. Get the fuck out of the way. Yeah, like, to me, that was the breakthrough of like, oh, they're already who they are. This we have no control. Yeah. We have observed that our friends who have more than one kid, the parents seem to be like more chill and they're just like, all right, everything's crazy, but that's all good. They've like come to terms with the madness of their life. Versus like the neurotic, you know, first time mom. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah. But you can't well, really helicopter parent too, or you'll run out of fuel. <laughs> That's well, really I, good. I do think that, you well, know, there's something there too, Moshe. I, <laughs> I mean, I don't know if that the was. The thing about parenting is like some parents parent like they're helicopters, like helicopter oh, parents. No, but that's funny. I you're, making came fun, up with this. you're making fun of that. But the thing you, that you actually said, you can't helicopter parent two kids. That's really interesting. Field. That's actually as good as it takes a village to raise a child. <laughs> oh and it did God. just fall out of your mouth. So I'm definitely a helicopter parent and I hate it. And I don't know how to change that except have another kid. It's and a, I can't have another kid. So. Right. We got lucky because the universe decided to stri- strike us both barren. Uh, you guys, good luck. It is a personal decision, and I think we've given you an unbelievable amount and of take, wisdom. And take six months and see where you're at. And if you do decide to not have another kid, don't be, don't feel guilty, you know, and, and don't feel bad about it. I think you just have to make a few adjustments. And if you're willing to take the leap and you're young and you have the energy, you should do it. Yeah, the truth is, you guys, your Wi-Fi froze about two minutes ago and if you can't even afford the kind of wi-fi that will allow for a dynamic zoom then i don't think you're ready to have two children in that house okay i'm gonna just say it um good luck to both of you and enjoy enjoy your eight month old while he's eight months old yeah thank you so much thank you all thank you do you think they're googling me right now like who is that third person no They were excited. They even said your I name. I think they said Dex. Dex <laughs> Sandler. Dex, Dex Sandler. Sanders. <laughs> oh, Dex, do you have time for one more call? I have all day. Oh He's God. like a golfer. He wants to be away from his family right it. now. I love it. Let's it do- is the only excuse I ever, I, like one I don't feel bad about is work. Oh, it's two couples. Dan and Jackie in Bedford, New York. D and J. D and J. Bedford. In B and N. In B and N. Why? Can't helicopter parent two kids? You'll run out of fuel, dude. That, that's your book <laughs> title. Something. That's your book title. <laughs> mm. I feel bad. I think that that what does do sound bad? like our child would really like another kid. Oh no, I didn't mean to come and plant discourse. Whoa, whoa, oh my whoa, god! Whoa, Are you guys whoa. at a wedding? What's happening? Midsummer hey, vibes guys. right now. What is going on? <laughs> is this just how you dressed up for the podcast? Yes. <laughs> I don't want to speak for Moshe and Natasha, but yes, they will swing with you. <laughs> uh, Dax Shepard is with us. Hi. Hey, Dax, great to meet you. Nice to meet you guys. Why are you so dressed to the nines? We had our wedding last month and figured, why not wear our wedding garb again? Oh, ah, that's crazy. beautiful because you don't ever get there. She's never worn her wedding dress since. We I was going to wear it on Conan and you said it was a bad idea. I did? I think it just didn't fit me the same or something. I didn't. 
<laughs> Listen, my, mine know, barely fit. I'm six months pregnant. Ah, oh, okay, cool. Good. Congratulations. Oh, last chance. Yeah. <laughs> That's so cool, you guys. You look. You make a very handsome couple. Well, thank you. Weird compliment, isn't it? Handsome. handsome. It is. <laughs> like to call a woman handsome is a little. Feels, it's, it's, it's old dicey. school. It is. Yeah. 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 Uh, well, uh, okay. I'm sorry. Kind of beautiful. Yeah, you're you're fine as fuck. <laughs> hey, dude, you're fine as fuck for real. Um, like Dan, it. super super inviting face. Yeah, just, like just a super fuckable, kind, fuckable looking, lips. Well, well, okay. that's my vibe. I'm sure. more that's that's Oakland. <laughs> okay, that's how O Town's doing it. I, I just want to say, what an inviting face. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So you guys can't have that many problems. You're like what six weeks into being married. Six weeks and six well, months pregnant. Six months. It pregnant. was our it was our second wedding. We got married during COVID last year. Uh huh. So this was our our party. We've been together seven years. So we've got plenty of problems. Yeah. Congrats, it's scratchy, scratch. Itchy, 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 itchy. <laughs> we just had our seven year anniversary last week. That was at that at the sushi restaurant. Was our seven year no anniversary. No wonder you were so itchy. Yeah, yeah. Well, she's allergic to shellfish too, so that was part of it. All right, what's up? How can we help? Um. So our issue has to do with food. Okay. I'm Italian. I love good food. I've got some really amazing family recipes that I cannot cook for my husband because he has a very strict diet. And it's been okay up until this point. But now that we're about to start a family, I'm having a little bit of anxiety about how it's going to be going forward. Mm. We don't really sit down for dinner. If I'm going to be putting the effort into making a meal, he needs to eat it. And um, when he cooks for me, it has no flavor. Mm. What What are his dietary restrictions? I just, well, I like to like... Nothing fun. <laughs> I like to eat pretty plain. Um, like I don't know, like healthy stuff most of the time if I can. I no also cheese? Like to kind of... No, no cheese, no gluten, no salt, no butter. What? No, <laughs> I'm not like I know. militant about it, but like that's just the preference. Hey, Dan, do you, uh, so I have to eat like you, but it's not by choice. It's uh, autoimmune. Do you, is, do you have any like medical reason you eat that way? No, I'm Jewish. Jewish. <laughs> <laughs> just Jewish. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, just Jewish. <laughs> um, no, I just it's sometimes I just feel better when I eat that way. Like I've had some stomach issues before. Nothing like serious, you don't. But, please don't go into it. Um, I would love to. Hear that. <laughs> yeah. um, well, honestly, Moshe is kind of like that, and I'm Italian, and like the one thing I know how to make really good is lasagna, and he's just like, oh, can we not have so much cheese in the house? Like every like six weeks, he'll seat me down and be like, can we cut down on the cheese we have in the house? <laughs> And like he doesn't really eat yeah. meat that isn't kosher, and so I'm not gonna drive to like Pico to get him kosher meat. And like the thing is, like I'm not that good of a cook, so I kind of need butter. Yeah, I was and waiting like, for that because you <laughs> I, you over I, here I, describing this Italian wife with uh, <laughs> legacy family recipes. I'm, I'm like heirloom uh, ingredients. Sounds nice to me. <laughs> Maybe I would eat a little bit more indulgently, <laughs> Natasha, if I had a wife that was more like this is like Nana used to make. <laughs> Here's the thing. We tried to make my grandmother's chicken soup the other day. And this one likes to just insert himself into the recipe and improvise. You like to insert yourself into the recipe? Dude, you got a weirder relationship with food than I thought, man. (laughs) He, He like throws ingredients that aren't supposed to be in there. He takes ingredients out that are supposed to be there. And then by the end of the thing, it's just really disappointing because it doesn't even end up tasting like how my grandmother makes it. And it's emotional for me. See, the problem with Moshe is actually a really good cook. And he really understands sauces and flavor. And then we started buying earth balance instead of regular butter. And so he'll use earth balance and like vegetarian bouillon. But it's a lot of salt. So he's able to like create these like great salad dressings and great sauces. But we can still have stir fry with tofu and vegetables and rice. This one's easy to me. I know what the solution is. I want to hear what Dax thinks. I don't think this is about the food at all. Mm. I think that your love language is preparing something beautiful Mm. and offering it. And when he doesn't appreciate it and enjoy it Mm -hmm. and let you do that for him, you feel rejected. I think you feel like your love has been rejected. Damn, Dax. And I think, Dan, you you have a different love language. Um, It's binary So with my wife and I... (laughs) Yeah. Uh, my wife and I is this is a really big hurdle uh, which is 
I grew up single mother, three kids. The way you showed someone you loved them was to never be a drain on them. Everyone's time and resources were at max capacity. So I would demonstrate how much I loved you by never being a, a, a drain on you. And Kristen grew up opposite way. And the way you would show someone you love them is to offer to do something for them. So she can ask for help. I register her asking me for help as you don't love me because you're not respecting the fact that I am dealing with my own shit. Conversely, I won't accept her help because that would be me saying I don't love you to her. So the help isn't what's going on. The whether or not, you know, I like the gift she got or I didn't go and get her. What else, that's not what's going on. It's like, do you, when you send out your signal of love, does your partner see it as that signal of love and yeah. vice versa? And so, I think you first have to identify like what it is your signal of love is and like take the meal part out of it. Cause I bet it, I bet it manifests itself in other ways than just this dinner sitch. And maybe that you guys can like think of some practical solutions. Like maybe once a week she cooks for well, you. Dan, Dan, how would you, how do you demonstrate that you love your wife? I think I do it with like the little acts or like acts of service. One of the languages. Yeah. Yeah. Cause and, like, I like verbal shit. Like I'll tell Kristen all day long. You're so beautiful. You're like so Moses. smart. You're so funny. Like, that's and that's what too. I'm, that's what I'm looking for. Like I want validation all the time. I want verbal validation. I don't want you to go out and like plan the perfect gift for me silently for six months and then show it to me. <laughs> mm -hmm. that, I don't, that doesn't mean, I want I you want. to tell, I want you to get in bed and go, <laughs> Me too. <laughs> yeah. I want you to get in bed and go like, you're so tall and fit and you're so bright. Mm -hmm. And my God, are you quick witted? Absolutely. Like I just yes. want a laundry yes. list of all the ways I'm great verbally and you don't have to ever get me a present again. Yep. I'm, I'm a hundred percent the same way. I mean, so that's right. I think Dax is onto something. Dan, your love language is acts of services. And I forgot your name. I'm sorry. Jackie. Jackie, your love language is lasagna. And so I think that I think there's a very simple solution here, right? Like and, and this is less emotionally uh enlightened than what Dax is offering you. And I think that he's right and you should look into it. But like in reality, um eating Nana's uh, you know, chicken cacciatore seven nights a week, it's not only not healthy, but it's not special. Right. It's just eventually going to become like we are an Italian restaurant around here. And Dan's way of eating is like horrible, boring, awful, but probably for the longevity of Very both good. of you, healthy and nice. So my suggestion would be for you to make an event. Aren't Italians well, it's Sunday dinner, Sunday dinner. Aren't they famous for doing like, yeah. hey, it's as we get together and we do the Sunday gravy or whatever thing. Yeah. Right. So so Dan gets <laughs> Dan gets to to do boring town Monday through Friday. Then everybody stays healthy and happy and, and alive for a long time. And, and also he could get better at it. Maybe he should sure. take a class or something. Dan takes a health. I love that. Dan takes I a healthy that. cooking Thank class. You. That's so smart. Like, Natasha. Like, like that brewer's yeast that we use. Sure. Like there's ways to like add flavor. It's a little little high sodium but you know just there's like nope. vegan ways but that's to really like smart dan takes a healthy cooking class because guaranteed there are or just buys a the moosewood uh cookbook they're guaranteed there are healthy low fat uh non-indulgent ways to eat that are delicious and it's healthy for you as a pregnant woman like you don't want to od on like cheese cheese is gross but i mean then, it's delicious but then the but weekend because this is what we do in our relationship now we eat we, vegan during the week and vegan doesn't mean like french fries it means like we try to eat somewhat healthy during the week and then the weekends we can have fun with the food and then it be makes things kind of exciting because we can have a god what happened to comedians doing like cocaine and just rocking out like <laughs> every comedian is just too healthy now it's, it's awful but that's how we live and this week on the weekend you make what the a special nona's special and dan you shut the fuck up and eat it take it you just take it pig enjoy it take it once a week yeah, and don't say shit about it. Say this is delicious. That's the only thing you're allowed to, to say. You're about to, you, or you can say the word mama because Italians love when you say that. You, you take a bite, you go mama, mama mia, a papa pia. Uh, no, but I, I, yeah. So you should eat that meal on Sunday, Dan. But I think more importantly, you need to look at her and go, oh my god, that took so long. Mm. Thank you so much for spending that much time making this for me. I loved it. Mm -hmm. I see your act of love, and I am grateful for it. And I'm, 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 I'm present for it. Um, I have a question for Dax. Do you have? Because uh, maybe you can help us. We have a rule with no phones at the table, but you have two girls who are probably on phones. Like, do you have that similar situation for a dinner time, like a regular time? We don't have a phone problem because they're not in the mix. Okay. And iPods aren't. iPads aren't in the mix, and video games. Are, so there's three things in my house that are not happening. 
uh, those things. And they complain about it all the time. So-and-so's got it. And I go, yeah, but you got a swimming pool and you got a dirt bike. Mm -hmm. Like You get shit. You don't have certain shit. So they don't have phones or iPads. No. That is precisely the kind of thing. And I know that if they heard this, and I know you're going to play this for them. I know that if they heard this, they'd be like, fuck you. But that's precisely the kind of thing that they will look back on and be so grateful to you for. I tell them all the time. Um, the world is enormous and I don't want you to reduce it to a seven inch screen. Yeah. I don't want your focus to be on a seven inch thing when the world is all around you. And I know it's frustrating, but look, you get to play with it at your friend's house. I'm not saying you can't play video games when you go out and about in the world, you do whatever you want to do, but, um, doesn't happen here, but we have a bunch of other shit that your friends are jealous of. So it's like, no one gets everything and that's that. Yep. And, Speaking and so, of nobody, oh, sorry. So then do you have like a, an age that you tell them they can get the phone? Um, no, I hasn't. I'm not committing Gra- to that. Gra- like yeah, they, want, cool. they want me to commit to that. And then I just say, well, it's not today and, and I'm not a, a clairvoyant. So I'm not sure when that'll be, but we'll continue to talk say about grad it. grad school. If you get into grad school, I'll get you a phone. Yeah, when you can <laughs> buy. Now that is a weird policy my mom had that I do kind of want to enact, which is like, you go out and make your own money. You buy whatever the fuck you want. Mm, like I'm not in charge of the good. money you make to incentivize that pride of having made your own money. That's up to you. You want to buy an eight ball? You know, go nuts. That's Would your, your mom money. have let you buy drugs with your own money? Probably not. No, yeah, she wouldn't have. I like that though. That's but, smart. but I I do think that like phone phone use even as a couple, the two of you, like that's a lot. Like that can be something that can be for me anyway has been disheartening during a dinner time where you're presenting someone something and they're just like, ooh, 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 like just like scr- skimming news. Like while you're like, you hear that spot on Moshe Kasher. Impression here's my food. Did. Oh, but that I, was not you talking. just now. <laughs> but I think it's like, it's, it's nice. It's not that long. It's like 25 but, minutes. Like just to enact like, Oh, we don't do phones at the table and just have that connection. And sometimes That's in the so morning, funny. they didn't mention phone use, but they already no. said it's a, it's an issue with every single yeah, couple. She, she nailed it. No, yeah. it, it totally is. It totally and and is. also more, Mornings are nice. Like Moshe and I would do, I'd say, okay, can we do 15 minutes? So for coffee, now we can't really do it with the kid, but we would like set an alarm for 15 minutes, throw, he would throw his phone and then we'd I have, have coffee. I have to physically throw it to get it away from me. <laughs> okay. For 15 minutes. Sorry, Dan, I got a challenge. I, I don't know if yours is act of service. Mm-hmm. Are we sure okay. that's your love language? Because um, you can read the book. I, I think if you were someone that felt loved when someone provides an act of service that would be registering for you the cooking would yes mm-hmm. i and think that's oh sorry that's my like giving language i don't the receiving one i think is um i don't know what is it acts of service I I words of affirmation it, right? presence or fucking that's how they say it in the book <laughs> yeah dan do you love to fuck I'm sorry. It's about the time of the podcast. But Danny, you a horny guy. You love to fuck. No, but but what I like is acts of service, and that's what I give Moshe, and that's what I expect from him. That's the problem. And is- he wants touch. He always wants me to like massage his arm and then like tell him he's handsome. Yeah. You know, and I don't. Me too. We should date. <laughs> we should. That'd be God, I and would like- reassure you like you can't imagine. I would I would massage you and tell you you're beautiful from the back of that dirt yeah. bike all day long. Also, I would just poke at your penis. Like, just, I want you to acknowledge. I have a penis every 15 minutes. Now, that, not to instigate sex, no, just to go like, I'm interested. You'd say, now that's, poke now that's a penis. Yes. That, that is what that Can't is. Can't keep my hands off of it. Don't even want sex, but I got to poke it. I actually think massage is a very good analogy for the love language thing. Because I always say, if you want to know how to massage, how someone wants you to massage them, to get a massage from them because they mm. do what they want you to do to them. And that is the issue with us. Is like you, you, Natasha, do for me what you want me to do for you. And the same thing is true for me. And we're kind of like, we're kind of like missing each other. Like we should be doing the, doing the thing that's being done for us, not the thing that we want to be done to us. Anyway, I do think though that the system of what Dak said, I take it back. You you don't shut the fuck up. You compliment the meal and you make it special. You do a this Sunday thing. What's the worst thing that happens? You get you eat you get, shit your pants yeah, on you get Monday. Diarrhea. Big deal. <laughs> That's right. Diarrhea. Fuck, I do that once a year. And I'm I'm on TV. <laughs> Italian Sundays, diarrhea Mondays. It's yeah. Gonna be great. Is that, you can't live with that. Damn. And and also go out to eat at like vegan restaurants. You know because they're going to be doing it better than you. And then he can be happy. You can be happy. It tastes good. Yeah. Hopefully. I gotta imagine Bedford is a hotbed of vegan options. But I mean, they have it, right? No. Mm. You can get down to the city and do that. 
Yeah, yeah, you guys will figure it out. But what? How does that sound? Sunday dinner. Yeah, we could do that. And and then you can thank me with a nice handbag. Oh, you want presents? Okay. Uh, so she gave you. That's she good. All the love languages. Yeah, <laughs> she has all the love languages. No, she, she's Italian. She's omni love language. She's Italian. She's like my love language is all of them. Please touch me. <laughs> tell me I'm beautiful. Buy me shit. Let's eat. Well, good luck on this baby. Thank you for wearing your old wedding outfits. That's and, so cool. Uh, yeah, we'll see you at the Bohemian Grove, you guys. Good luck. Yeah, we can't wait for your book, Natasha. Oh, yeah, good. We yes, pre ordered it. Oh, thank you. Okay. Thank All right. You bye, guys. you guys. You have already. Yeah, thanks, you, thanks, thanks, yeah. Thank you. Thanks, thank, guys. Thank you, guys. I'm You've written a forthcoming book, is that? I've written a book. I'm trying to get all of our podcast listeners to pre-order it oh. because apparently that actually helps the New York Times uh, mm. list. So, Does it already um, have a title? It's called "The World Deserves My Children." It's done, Dax. Well, I know. I'm just learning of it. I'm so sorry. I wasn't hip okay. to it prior to this. Um, it's, a, it's already done, and it's coming out when? It's coming out November 15th. Oh, my God. This is so exciting. How long did it take you to write it? Four years. <laughs> well, seven, it was like... Seven, eight hundred pages? Yeah. <laughs> it's, like, it's like the actual, It's like the absolute smallest amount of pages that you could have and have... And still call it legally a book, <laughs> not an essay. <laughs> not a pamphlet. Uh, you have an essay coming up in November, don't you? <laughs> Natasha, what was the name of your essay? No, the book's great. It's very funny. It's like a kind of a... It's not really a parenting guide as much as it is like a cynical look at what it's like to have a parent as a non-natural... At, at well, that's I, good. I, I had like kids at the prime of my life, where like where my life was already where I wanted it, and then having to have her fit into that. Can I ask how old you were when you had? Your I baby? was forty three. Uh huh. But I had frozen my eggs when I was thirty eight. Smart. And then I deemed Moshe um, egg worthy. Egg worthy. I, so I sprayed. Out, I sprayed the eggs. I let him. Did, did she bring them out on like a yep. satin? <laughs> that's right. Presenting pillow. It was like there was smoke coming from the dry ice and oh, stuff like that. And so then I, I just sprayed so hard. I stood over them and I just <laughs> yeah, I just <laughs> sprinkled. Steamy. It was awesome. And there was a doctor there just observing everything to make sure it all worked out. Sure, sure. And then now that little egg is upstairs playing with my parents. You know the 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 the, the towel joke. No. Okay, I, I got to say, so one of my, uh, our main director on Parenthood, this great guy, Larry Trilling, I don't know if you guys have ever worked with him, best director ever. He's telling me his favorite thing about Passover is that they have all these Jewish jokes that just get told for a week straight. And he told me this one, which I really love. There's a guy, a Jewish fella, he goes to his rabbi and he says, um, I'm having a hard time um, getting my wife to achieve orgasm. What, what should I do? And the rabbi, and I'm not going to do the Jewish accent, the rabbi says, okay, what you want to do is you go find a Gentile, a big Gentile, <laughs> and get him into the room and have him wave a towel over his head while you make love to your wife, and, and she will climax. And the man says, okay, thank you so much. And he goes out to a bar, and he finds a big strapping Gentile. He gets him into the room. He has the Gentile waving the towel over his head. He's making love to his wife. No orgasm. So he goes back to his rabbi, and he says, I did everything you said, and she still did not reach orgasm. And he's like, hmm, this is interesting. Okay, tonight, have the Gentile make love to your wife, and you wave the towel over your head. <laughs> and he goes, okay. So he gets the Gentile to his house. The Gentile's making love to his wife, and he's waving the towel over the head, and all of a sudden, the wife starts coming and coming, and he goes, that's how you wave a fucking towel. <laughs> Wait, these are jokes for Passover yeah, by religious these are classic people? classic Passover jokes. <laughs> Isn't yeah. that an incredible joke? But yeah. so, somehow you saying the doctor was in the room <laughs> made, like funny. triggered that joke. That's how you wave a, a fucking, fucking towel, towel over your head. <laughs> <sighs> That's a depressing joke, too. Yeah. It's all about, it's basically, the, the subtext is Jews can't fuck. All right. Well, he told me about 12 jokes, and I realized that we, as Gentiles, had almost the same jokes, but you could insert black guy for gentile that's hilarious and i realized all these jokes really the the foundation or uh, the, is is emasculation and then so it's like different groups have mm. other groups they feel emasculated sure. by and mm. then you just plug them in i'm sure you could tell this joke in asia with some group you know two different groups yeah that's really funny so Moshe, are we going to listen to two secrets or what oh do you think? well oh, yeah. should we keep going yeah, yeah all right do you have time to it? listen to, we can we stop can. asking if i have time. all right all right all right we, always feel, we feel guilty you know i we, gave my my family got 8 a.m till 2 p.m in huntington beach no less with a pack up, a loading of a truck, oh, yeah. you know, the All whole right. thing. How was it? You guys just sit on the beach and like, what do you do? I was in a motorcycle race yesterday in Huntington Beach and they were kind enough to come down for the Aww. weekend and be supportive. And camp that out kind of? No, no, we were at a hotel. That oh, is so funny. He's like, I gave my family all day in Huntington Beach 
after I did do uh, 800 laps around Mo- Moshe, Moshe. I said today. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yesterday was my day until 2 p.m. I'm like, no, that's me in a few years. I'm like, I gave my family a Sunday in Indio. Yes, I DJed at Coachella the night before, but that's immaterial. Indio for the family. All right. We all, immaterial. We have a uh, secrets hotline where people, yes, you know, call and leave secrets on our hotline. We'll play a couple for you yeah. and then we'll say goodbye. And I love secrets. What a pleasure it's been. Hi, Natasha. Hi, Moshe. Um, I'm calling with a, I hope, pragmatic secret for your followers. And that's that. You can barter at Goodwill stores. Um, in fact, if you don't like the price on something, you can just peel that little sticker right off. Try to be careful about not leaving too much residue so it's not super obvious. Um, and then you just take it up to the front and say, hey, I'm interested in buying this. And like, I don't even know if it's nine times out of ten. I think it's all the time. Every time I've brought it up, it's been a lower price than one that I'm actually looking to, looking to pay. Um, it's always like the lowest price of like their whatever like item collection it's part of. Um, also you shouldn't do this with orange tags because those are collectibles and so it's just not as likely, uh, that they'll give you a lower price. Uh, yeah, I do this pretty regularly and I don't only do it at Goodwills. I don't do it at like local thrift stores because the Goodwill CEO makes a shit ton of money. And I already give them so much of my money that <laughs> when I'm like, well, I would give you more of my money if you let me buy this at a lower price. So that's what I do. That's Everyone always tries to justify their version yeah. of stealing. I know. Steal. <laughs> This Just fucking be a thief. Like <laughs> I have so much respect for Pablo Escobar going like, yeah, I'm a drug kingpin. This, like, rem- when, yeah, go ahead. this reminds me of the, uh, this great Todd Berry joke. He goes, I have a buddy come up to me. He said, I got a, uh, I got a great tip on getting uh, free movies at the, at your ho- in your hotel. He goes, oh, what is it? It's like, oh, you just watch the movie, and then you call down to the front desk, and you say, oh, it didn't come through, and they take it off your bill. He goes, oh, so your, your hot tip is stealing. He's like, yeah, I got a good, I got a hot tip on how to get free blueberries at the supermarket. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, I do have to say, like, I've been, in, I've been there not having a lot of money, shopping at Goodwill, more for vintage stuff, you sure. know, but... More I've stolen. I've to... stolen from the Goodwill. Uh, not stolen. You've but stolen from a Goodwill. I've definitely like there was a mirror I really wanted in college, and I remember the girl was like, "Oh, this is reserved for Sheila." And then like Fucking I came Sheila. in like the next day, and I was like, "Hey, I'm Sheila." That's really with someone funny. else, and I like got the mirror, and it was like this gorgeous like old mirror, and I loved it, and it brought me a lot of joy. So I don't know. I mean, but I was also young. I wouldn't do that now. I would love I think to sometimes have been when there. you're young. I would love to have been there when the Sheila ruse well, unraveled. I was just gonna say I was remembering a news story. I remember a Sheila walking into traffic in front of Goodwill. <laughs> I, I can't imagine that's related. Screaming, "Where's my mirror?" Yeah, yeah. Right, but there's no way that's related. I finally, what year was this? I mean, this is like in college. Yeah, just, she's like, yeah. I finally found my family's heirloom mirror that had been lost to the <laughs> generations, and I. But I wouldn't do that now. But I'm just saying, like, that's cute. I'm not. I'm I, not against. And I'm, I'd hot. maybe switch. <laughs> I'd switch a tag here and there. Sure. You know, if but I don't. Wouldn't do that now. I was shocked. I thought what she was saying is that she did change tags. But yeah. In fact, she's just removing it and then letting them kind of prices right it. Oh, it, that's what she was saying. Yes. She like just takes it off and says, how much is this? Yes, and she finds that's that more really often funny. than not, they underestimate the value of it. So she's got a lot of justifications. One is she's putting the onus on them. Well, like they said it was that much money. That's really funny. Right? That's another way she's uh, she's in the clear. Just It's okay to be flawed, Just but what's not okay is to be dishonest about your flaws you're yeah. a thief and that's fine I'm a, i just I like wanted it. to call and tell you i'm a thief but only at goodwill incorporated and the ceo i don't know how much the ceo of goodwill drop makes. that argument the <laughs> ceo of goodwill is making a lot of money i mean honestly maybe she's I right mean, because, steal from amazon then well what is the main cost of running a business is inventory and if everybody gives you their inventory for free goodwill is a for-profit company they just get free inventory all they do is pay rent and sell shit but if your premise for stealing is depending on how well compensated the ceo is it's just an interesting and like set of rules to go by that's why I so steal- it's like you find out that you know ford is running at a deficit this year well i'm not going to steal from ford this year <laughs> well that's why i i only steal my chemicals from dupont that's the only place but only do years that they're profitable that's I right hope. Now, this was a good year for stealing from dupont yeah all right let's play another secret laura give us a doozy hi Moshe. 
Natasha. Hi, Natasha. Uh, so my secret is a couple years ago when I was single, I became obsessed with this really cheap body spray I found at this, like, local uh, Middle Eastern grocer. And allegedly it had pheromones in it. I don't know anything about the science about that. But... I noticed that any time I would wear this perfume, men would comment on it like all the time. Middle Eastern. And so then I got smart and I started spraying it on the pillows and the sheets of men that I wanted like return investment on. So if I like hooked up with somebody and they left the room or if they like went up to work, I would just viciously spray this stuff all over their bed. And it got so bad that I was seeing this guy that I really wanted things to work out. And so one day I texted his roommate while he was at work and said, hey, I think I left something in so-and-so's room. Can I come over and look for it? And when I was in his room alone pretending to look for it, I sprayed the ever-loving fuck out of this man's bed. And later that night, he texted me saying that he had never felt this way and he missed me and my bet and his bet still smelled like me. We're no longer seeing each other, but the man that I've been seeing now for about four years, I did the same thing to and he doesn't know. And that's my secret. Bye bye. I mean, that that's a gift. This feels like a plot to a Disney movie. Like the, like some Middle Eastern mer- merchant gives you a special <laughs> magical love potion that you can trap any man you want. Just say Aladdin, Moshe. Aladdin, sure. High up atop the Kaibar Pass, this <laughs> beautiful smell. I mean, anything that can help. I mean, I will. Isn't that like wishing for love, though? Aren't you not allowed to wish the genie? You can't wish for love from a genie. Is, is that it? one of the rules? I, I feel like that's one of the rules. Like, you can't make someone I, love you. Is that the. I thought the rule is you can't wish for more wishes. That's certainly one. That's got to be one. Anything so else? So then, how do you get the love? Love. Well, again, the. I, I hate to p- piss on these secrets. I do admire anyone giving away a secret, but I can't relate to want, want wanting to make someone love you. I'm, I only want someone that like is super hot for me and loves me. Like I don't. That sounds too tenuous to trick someone for a minute into loving me. I just feel, would feel so insecure. Like I really like to know someone's crazy about me. We're the same guy. Oh my god! This is how I feel too. I feel the same. Why? Why ever? I've never felt like I need to. I don't even relate to the idea of chasing somebody that's not interested in me. We people call in all the time trying to like get someone yeah. to come towards them. I'm just like, they already don't like you. Why are you yeah. attracted to a person that's not attracted to you? It's why I don't. I also don't worry about cheating. Like, how am I going to be involved in that decision? Like, I'm, you either are going to or you're not. I don't have a say in that's that. That's how I feel. I feel the okay, same. Okay. Well, way. then, do you guys have any advice for like women who are like finding Love, trying to find love and like it can be really hard out there and a lot of like if you're 38 you might not even be getting seen on all these apps because I, like the guys have like a age filter I think if the pattern you find yourself in is that you're constantly interested in men that are not interested in you back what you have to acknowledge is you're attracted to people that are either unavailable or only want you for one thing. So there's like a lack of honesty with oneself. It has to start with that. Like, How do you find someone who's interested I, I in you never, besides sex? I never found myself like 12 girls in a row fucked me once and never wanted to call me. Like I'd have to, I'm the common denominator of that pattern, not these other people. 100%. Although your problem that you're describing sounds I better. I would love Better, that better that than pine, pining for somebody that's totally uninterested in no, you. Like, I, no, my problem was different. I was swimming in pussy, but that was my <laughs> that was my pathology. That's where I was. As my a, trauma. <laughs> my trauma made me fuck everyone I met. Yeah, no, I was okay. not. My trauma didn't make me spray a Middle Eastern uh, <laughs> spell perfume upon someone's sheets. That was. But I'm with you. It's like... I always say this on the podcast. You deserve to be with somebody that wants you. Why would you ever chase after somebody that doesn't want you? You Wouldn't you want the person? Because you're attracted well, to them. Well, and why are you attracted to them? Because you, like you had abs? a parent that didn't give you enough of tension. And you think if you can find this one person that has the exact same disposition as the parent you wanted approval and attention from. And you get them to love you, you will heal that. I mean, this yep. is not like deep psychology. We're all attracted to our parents. And if that leads you into bad places, you probably have to confront that. I got lucky. I'm attracted. My Kristen's my identical to my mother, but mm. my mother was a gangster. She was great. 
you know, thank God I wasn't trying to date my father. Yeah. Because I'd have been fucked. Was your mom great? Great. My mom's upstairs. We could bring her down and find out. <laughs> I'd love, um, I'd love. My mom was. I, you know, it's interesting. I she's hear, watching our child. She's watching our child, and I don't think that Natasha and my mom are that similar. No. I, I, I don't think so. But I think that. Uh, I think that I, it's interesting. I wonder what that. Like, I don't have that particular. But, but, but I, I think say, you're right for, about but, that. For, but forget about whether they're similar or not. What I know is that your mother loved the shit out of you and adored you. That is for sure. That's obvious yeah. because you don't want to be with someone that's giving you a different version of love. That's yeah. the important part. Yeah. And Natasha, I don't think, were, did you play a bunch of games with Moja at the beginning? No, no, I did tell him he could have a three-way once we had a baby. The bi Her big game <laughs> was to, pro she, yeah. uh, she just, she sort of snagged me into monogamy by saying, oh, we can do all that stuff later after the ch the baby's like come. Like me in like, the phone conversation with my daughter. That's like, exactly yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll get you a phone well, someday. Uh, when are we going to have a threesome, Natasha? Well, not today. I'm not committing you, to yeah, it today. It's not today, but I will just say that, I, yeah. listen, she said, the world is big, and I don't want you to think that the world is just two women <laughs> large you know i want you to think big but have you considered what if her version of a three-way is the gentile with the white towel <laughs> like what, what if she wants to bring a dude into the mix well yeah, what do that's you think not of that, the three-way you were you Listen, were thinking of if is you it? sincerely were asking for that it would be a different conversation yeah. and i would i would happily be on the side spinning a towel saying now that's how you spin a fucking towel you would i, I feel like you would it's a jewish tradition i can't say but no. then you would want to also bring a girl in yeah 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 i would just be while i was spinning i was just thinking this has got to be buying me another woman at some point <laughs> yes right? yes <laughs> all right dax that was such a fucking pleasure oh it was so fun yeah. it's like you know what it's like is when um well, I, actually, I don't know that it's what it's like because it's never happened to me. But you can imagine like getting to be on Game of Thrones, right? Yes. Where like you get to be in the world of the thing. So the fact that I've been watching you guys and enjoying it so much, and then I've I've somehow inserted myself, I've willed myself into the experience, and it over delivered. That's oh, well, so nice to hear. Yeah, we, we were so thrilled it. to have you. We were so excited to have you, and you get such great guests on your podcast. We were trying to to, to decide if we wanted to call you. The Prince Harry of our podcast oh. or the Scar Joe of our podcast? Oh. Wait. What would you prefer? Obama, probably. Wait, you had Obama on your podcast? Yes! Are you kidding? Wait, Dak, so let's talk Hillary about your Clinton, podcast for Obama. a second. No, we don't need to. Wait, but how, you had Hillary Clinton and Obama on your podcast? So yeah. are you the kind of person who's like, you don't give a shit, you just ask people for stuff? Oh, no. I cannot ask anybody for anything. So how do you get people like that on your podcast? You won't like the answer to this, but Obama was an incoming call. Hillary was an incoming call. Prince Harry Fuck was an incoming you. call. Well, you won't like the answer. You won't like the answer to this. Dax okay. Shepard well, was you, an incoming call. You, you, you no, you will like the answer on this. Yeah. We got incoming calls on all of those people, and we rejected all of them except for you. <laughs> <laughs> so just so, so you know. But look, I was an incoming call. I, I reached out to you guys and said, can I be a part of it? Well, we were thrilled to have you, and we were thrilled that you called. Can I tell you my favorite one, though? Yeah. yeah. Bill Gates. Oh, cool. You had Bill Gates on your podcast? Uh, twice. I got him to do a fucking live show in Seattle where he came out on stage in front of a live audience wow. and just trusted that it uh, would go okay. Okay, hold on. Can Before we go, since you are giving us so much of your time, like, what is there anything that we can extract? Like, anything you learned from... All these people? Or, or I don't know. From, from, from Bill? From Bill from Bill Gates? Yeah, how, do you get, how does he get like, the microchip into their bloodstream? Is that through the podcast or is, is that legit? totally separate? We did talk about that because... The reason we were doing a live show is we do another podcast called Armchair and Dangerous where we debunk conspiracy theories. And so we were doing a live show in Seattle for that show. Mm. And what the audience knew, well, what they learned real time was it was going to be about the Bill Gates conspiracies because there's a bazillion Bill Gates conspiracies. And then this motherfucker walked out and they were like, no way he's here for the Bill Gates conspiracy theory episode. It was mind blowing. That is really cool. I can tell you what I learned. Later, I can tell you, we had our 500th episode last Monday. And you know, Mondays is celebrities, Thursdays is experts. So Thursdays is Bill Gates, is Obama, is Hillary Clinton, is mostly like professors, doctors, people, smart fucking people. And so 250 of them. And what I really have concluded was, no one really knows anything. And I said, no, I say that sincerely. Like I'll have one social scientist on that says something by the end of it. I'm like, this, this son of a bitch cracked it. Uh, he or she's right. Two weeks later, someone comes with another point of view. That's also real, real research. And my conclusion was like, 
anything you're hell bent on at best is like 60 percent true oh most so of everyone my, needs to chill the fuck out everyone needs all with your convictions and your you know everyone needs to chill well we i follow a lot of moms on instagram and like doctor moms and like moms with phds and books and we're new york times bestsellers and like there was this doctor and she was like telling you how to how to you know respond to the kid if they're having a fit so our kid was having a fit about something that made no sense she hands me the phone with the, like a step-by-step -step instruction guide on how to <laughs> wait deal do you with remember what she was having a fit but it was like something so stupid i was like, curious i was like let me, go, let me go through this step by step i said all three things d that you sent me yeah she screamed through she didn't hear one of them she just screamed the whole time <laughs> and i was like well i like tossed the phone in the river well that's my <laughs> number one issue with all parenting advice which is because we have two and i have to do literally opposite things for both of them the notion that there is a set of a, a parenting protocol that works on all kids is hysterical because there's not even one that works for the two kids that live in my house. Mm. So that's what I'm talking about. This definitive nature, this binary nature that everyone in the public eye is operating under. You do this, avoid carbs, have this. Bullshit to all of it. You have one little technique that might work on a certain kid. Maybe it works on 30% of the kids, maybe even 50. It ain't going to work on all kids. Rye technique, fuck that. Fuck everyone. <laughs> it's going to work for some kids. It's going to be great. And there are a lot of other kids that don't. That's not the system for them. You know, there isn't a parenting technique. Kids are so different. Yeah, it's like that rabbi. I mean, he just, he wasn't sure which thing would get the woman to come was it that's right he started with the highest the percentage towel. that's right the highest percentage was he continued to make love to his wife while the gentile waved the towel well, that's for a, most Jewish wives, just having the Gentile present in the corner will be enough to reach climax. <laughs> just being able to look at a Gentile, yeah. just the, only the mere <laughs> visage like, of a Gentile in the corner will get you there. But seventy percent of the time, sure, it's but sometimes work. they need to step in and take it all the way to the physical. Because <laughs> you, you know what, that wife had a rule, which is once you're touching me. Uh -huh. We're in a different realm. It's just like your rule, but it's much more internal. <laughs> okay, well, listen to Dax's podcast, Armchair Expert. Don't you have another podcast with Kristen as well? Uh, no. Wait, right. Well, no, not yet. Don't listen to that one. Okay. Uh, this has been a pleasure. It's been so great having you. Thank you very much for joining us. I would love to come back. We would love to have you. Thanks, Dax. See you next Sunday. Bye.